evening, everyone, and welcome to the City of Oxnard's Planning Commission regular meeting for Thursday, October 21st, 2021. Our start time this evening is at 6.01. A quick housekeeping item. In accordance with Assembly Bill 361, members of the commission, public, and staff will be participating via teleconference. As shown on the agenda and online, please email all written public comments to planning at oxnard.org. Those wishing to speak may visit oxnard.org slash city dash meetings to fill out the speaker form or by calling 805-385-7878 by 3 p.m. the day of the meeting. During the meeting, a three minute opportunity will be given to the public after each item to allow additional participation. Members of the public are requested to email planning at oxnard.org or submit the speaker form on the city's website. When participating in the meeting, please keep your microphones muted until your turn to speak. For my colleagues, please use the raise hand feature when you wish to speak. Once you have been called on, please then click the hand again to lower. Because the meeting is electronic, all votes will be done by roll call. Lastly, for presenters, when needing to advance to the next slide, please clearly state next slide. And that concludes our housekeeping item. We'll go to our Madam Secretary to establish our quorum. Chair Chavez? Here. Vice Chair Ovejo? Here. Commissioner Connolly? Here. Commissioner Lopez? Here. Commissioner Meyer? Here. Commissioner Nash? Here. Commissioner Sanchez? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. And our Vice Chair, would you mind leading us in our Pledge of Allegiance this evening? Uh, yes, of course, Chair. Please stand, put your heart, hand over your heart, and begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for that, Vice Chair. We'll go into our next item, which is public comments for items not on our agenda. Uh, members of the public wishing to address the Planning Commission regarding any item not on the agenda, but within the subject matters jurisdiction of the Commission may do so at this time. However, the Commission cannot take action on any items presented during public comments and will be referred to our Commission Secretary. All public comment speakers will have three minutes. Um, Madam Secretary, just to confirm that we did not have anybody sign up for items not on the agenda, correct? Correct. Okay, so at this time, in accordance with AB 361, we'll go ahead and pause for three minutes. Um, again, members of the public wishing to provide any um, public comments for items not on the agenda, please email planning at oxnard.org or by filling out the speaker form on the city's website, oxnard.org slash city dash meetings. Uh, this is a time, three minutes. And Chair Chavez, uh, this is Scott Colbitz again calling from uh, the city chambers. Uh, wanted to let the uh, commission as well as members of the public know that we do have a slight change in, in the agenda tonight. Um, the item, the final item on your calendar tonight was a proposed drive through facility at the corner of Vineyard and River Park. Um, the applicant has contacted us and asked us to continue that item uh, from tonight's hearing to our next meeting on November 4th. Um, so for all of you, that means a slightly earlier evening tonight um, and your May, uh, not May, your November 4th meeting. Um, we only had one other item on that. Um, so that should help kind of balance out the, the various uh, meetings. Uh, we wanted to state that early in the agenda today, just so if anyone from the public is watching and or connecting with us, they're aware of that. Uh, we still will accept public comment, but we're not expecting a staff presentation and or applicant presentation for this item tonight. Um, and when we actually do pull up that item later on today's agenda, uh, we'll repeat these same comments for any that, anyone that might be joining us at that point in time. So just wanted to share that with you uh, while we had this um, set aside three minutes. So, and with that, uh, Dean and I will continue to monitor to see if any members of the public are looking to comment on items not on the agenda. Thank you for that announcement, Mr. Colwitz. You're welcome.
and members of the commission as we're winding the clock down here. No one has uh, signed up yet. So we'll have Dee give the final report out in 30 seconds from now. Um, Chair Chavez and Planning Commissioners, it's been three minutes. I haven't received any new speakers. Thank you, Madam Secretary, for that. So we'll go ahead and move on to our next item, which is our consent agenda. We have nothing listed there. We'll proceed to our ex parte declarations for public hearing items. Vice Chair Rao. Uh, thank you, Chair. I will be recusing myself on agenda items F2 and F3 due to federal statutes 18 U.S. Code sections 203 and 205. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Connolly. None. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Dr. Lopez. None. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Meyer. None, sir. Thank you. Commissioner Nash. Nothing to declare. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Sanchez. Um, none as well. Thank you. And for myself, um, I did a site visit um, for both cannabis locations and at the posting of the agenda, um, the proposed drive through location. Um, and that concludes my ex parte. We'll go ahead and um, just one more time, um, Mr. Kowitz, if you can just make that announcement again about the change in the agenda before we proceed to our first item, please. Uh, sure, uh, Chair Chavez. Uh, the, the quick announcement is item F4 on the agenda. It's a proposed uh, Starbucks drive through at the corner of Vineyard and River Park. Uh, we received a request to continue that item from tonight's meeting to November 4th. Um, I, I would entertain a motion to continue that, not actually at this point in time, but when we get to uh, that actual item on the agenda, but just for uh, uh, clarity for members of the public, we wanted to show that early in this meeting. Thank you, Mr. Kowitz. With that being said, we'll go to our first item, F1, project name, bed and breakfast, parking regulations, uh, planning and zoning permit number 21-580-05, zone text amendment, the proposed zone text amendment, modifies Oxnard City Code Chapter 16, Article 5, Section 16-374, pertaining to standards for traditional bed and breakfast, allowing bed and breakfast homestays um, containing no more than two guest bedrooms located on the corner lots may credit the non-primary street frontage towards the toward the parking requirement within 25 linear feet equal to one parking space subject to approval of the decision maker associated with the underlying permit to so the proposed location regulations would apply citywide. Um, this is filed by the city of Oxnard Community Development Department. Um, our city staff person is Isidro Figueroa, principal planner. The recommendation that is being proposed is to find the project to be exempt from the environmental review pursuant to California Environmental Quality Act guidelines Sec Guidelines 15060C, subsection 2 and 3, and 15061B, subsection 3, and adopt the resolution 2021 XX recommending that the City Council approve planning and zoning permit number 21 580-05, -05, zone text amendment, allowing bed and breakfast homestays um, located on the corner lots and may credit the non primary street frontage towards the parking requirement within 25 linear feet equal to one parking space. As a reminder to the public and to my colleagues that a pre-recorded staff presentation is available on the city's YouTube channel as well as online. With that, we'll go to staff if they have any additional information to provide before the commissioners um, go into any questions. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, uh, a couple of questions that were forwarded to uh, staff from the plan commission that uh, at this point at this time staff would like to quickly go over uh, one question asked if the amendment uh, is adopted does this mean that 50 linear feet will equal to two parking spaces 
Or is this question moot since one parking would be on the primary and the second on the primary, a non-primary and the maximum number of bedrooms for rent is two? Uh, the response to that would be if adopted, the amendment will allow an applicant to request that to require off-street parking for a proposed home state be located on the non-primary street frontage. Since 25 feet linear e equates to one parking space, it would require 50 linear feet to be able to accommodate two parking spaces. It would be determined through the development review permit process if a request for one or two off-street parking spaces located only on the non-primary street frontage is warranted based on existing con site conditions. Uh, for the benefit of the commission, the primary street frontage is the side of the property, the side of the property where the front yard is located, and the non-primary street frontage is the side of the property where the side yard is located. The second question was: some blocks primarily, but not exclusively, prohibit parking, that is, painted red curves. Is the length of these red curves removed in the calculations for measuring the relevant linear feet? The response to that is the measurement for a required off-street parking space is measured exclusively within areas of the curve that vehicles can legally park and would not include portions dedicated for emergency vehicles or access, ADA parking and driveways. Um, other than that, staff is available for any questions. Thank you, Mr. Figueroa. Thank you. Commissioners, is there any additional questions of staff? Commission, uh, Vice Chair Rahul. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for those uh, uh, that repetition of the um, or that summarization of the replies to those questions. Um, I had one follow-up related question. Can you briefly describe the characteristics why um, a parking space would or wouldn't be credited on either frontage or non-frontage street? Um, I'm just trying to determine um, what gives the ability um, other than there's available parking space, um, what other criteria does the um, planning department um, have to determine um, the space, uh, parking spaces? Thank you. So the direction from the um, committee to staff was to amend the uh, existing bed and breakfast and ordinance to accommodate for a non-primary parking allowance for home stays, which is currently allowed for, for uh, bed and breakfast inns, but not for home stays. Uh, the committee did not give any direction to staff to amend anything uh, other than that to include the non-primary street frontage parking allowance if site conditions allow for it through the development review process. And if I could uh, add maybe one other thing, Isidro, thank you for that. Uh, Vice Chair Wayho, I think the second part of your question essentially was, you know, are there what are the existing characteristics or conditions that we might say, no, we, we can't support this. Um, I can't provide a full list of what those might be because the development director, the community development director would be reviewing whatever the conditions were at that point in time. But I could imagine certain things coming up in the conversations. Um, such as if there is a uh, the Wilson neighborhood or another property somewhere else in town with a significant uh, uh, historic home, um, if street parking was such that on a regular basis all the street parking is already taken up, uh, I could see the community development director taking that into consideration as to whether or not to uh, consider allowing or counting the parking spaces on the surface street, if you will. Uh, there could be other situations that come up as well, um, you know, uh, uh, improvements to street frontages. Um, uh, uh, if there was, for instance, um, a bike, uh, a road diet to include uh, additional um, bike lanes, perhaps, and with that, the actual parking areas might be reduced um, uh, from the streets, uh, maybe from just one side of the street. You know, there could be a, a number of situations that potentially could come up in the future. Um, and the community development director would just simply need to look at those um, in real time when they would be reviewing the application. And, and, I, and I think one quick one uh, mm -hmm. to add to that is if also an analysis of the property, which is requesting the additional parking space, if perhaps the site conditions on that property do allow for a parking space, 
then it would be um, the director's prerogative to um, demonstrate or have the applicant demonstrate that they cannot park within that within their property. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Kortz and Mr. Figueroa. Um, I specifically ask, even though I don't live in that neighborhood, it's the most common complaint or topic in regards to the neighborhood council that I'm part of. And so um, I appreciate the additional information. Uh, thank you, Chair. That's all the questions I have. Thank you, Vice Chair, for your questions. Commissioner Meyer. Thank you, Chair Chavez. Um, <clears throat> my question was just for clarification. So I understand that this pertains specifically to the Wilson neighborhood, uh, even though it's a zone text amendment for Oxnard City Code, or is it just that? I, so I, I need some clarity in terms of is our bed and breakfasts um, only allowed within the Wilson neighborhood? Um, so if you could provide some clarity about sure. the restrictions and where this fits in, thank you. Sure, it's a kind of a tricky read. Um, so it's probably one of those things where we staff will probably look to clarify in the future, but the, the way the code reads, it is exclusive to the Wilson neighborhood. However, this, the planning commission can actually make a finding that uh, if a uh, property outside of the Wilson neighborhood has a significant heritage feature that it could actually um, designate it as a uh, homestay or as a uh, bed and breakfast in. So even though for the most part it's the Wilson neighborhood, there is an option for other properties outside of the Wilson neighborhood. Uh, unlikely, but it, it is possible. I see. So one of the components in our in our code around uh, where a bed and breakfast can be located is that significant uh, historical feature. Um, feature. Is that something that's that's common in our neighboring cities and and elsewhere? Well, uh, again, it's difficult. Uh, you obviously have the the Henry T. Oxnard Historic District, which is within the Wilson neighborhood. So obviously that's a pretty uh, 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 prevalent uh, area where you're gonna have these uh, homes that do display these significant features. Going outside of that, you potentially could have it. However, mo most of the, uh, the housing stock is either relatively new uh, or, or altered in such a way where most likely it loses that significant feature. It's a case by case. We would have to take an analysis. We would have to make an analysis of each individual request, but it is possible. And I Cedra, see. Cedra, that that was a good answer. I'm going to chime in there a little bit more. I, I uh, in a prior jurisdiction, a prior life, I actually used to serve as uh, staff to the Historic Preservation Committee, and uh, can speak to this um, well for a long time. But I'll try to be as brief as possible. Um, essentially, historic uh, uh, properties typically have uh, either a, a very unique architecture that's um, uh, that hasn't been modified. Uh, perhaps it was a work of a master architect of some sort or a master artist, if you will. Um, it also could be a place where someone of significance of the community lived and did something important in the community, or it could be a place where uh, something significant in the uh, development and history of the city occurred. Um, those those questions uh, in the city of Oxnard, how they're processed, uh, they would be uh, reviewed first and foremost by the Ventura County Histo uh, Cultural Heritage Board. We have a contractual relationship with them where they review our historic properties. And then a recommendation is provided to them back to the city council to actually give a designation of historic significance locally. Um, in the city of Oxnard, there's approximately, I forget if it's 24 or 25 properties uh, which actually have uh, a, a specific historic uh, landmark designation. Uh, a city of this size, that's actually a pretty small number. Um, uh, so, you know, there is potential for that number to grow as time goes on and things happen over time. Uh, but right now that number is fairly small uh, overall. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kowitz and, and Mr. Figueroa. So, I I'll continue my line of questioning, if you don't mind, just, just for my clarification and understanding. Um, so with regard to having historical significance, um, I mean, my experience with bed and breakfasts in general in different places in the state and country has been typically they are 
they do have an unusual architecture or charm associated with that. Um, what I wasn't clear about was how that relates to the requirements um, of who can and cannot use their home as a bed and breakfast. Um, and I understand there's short-term rental regulations that we've approved um, versus the ADU regulations that the state has created and, and we've um, we've adopted. But um, how does that work? And um, and how did we guide ourselves in terms of where you can and can't have and who can and can't have a, a bed and breakfast per se? Well, currently anyone in the Wilson neighborhood is allowed or could potentially uh, apply for a, either an inn or a homestay uh, just by being located within the Wilson neighborhood. Once you go outside of the Wilson neighborhood, that's where you have to demonstrate that the proposed property has some sort of significant heritage feature. Okay. Uh, but by code, uh, any any property within the Wilson neighborhood that qualify will qualify based on whether they meet the requirements. I see. So specifically because the Wilson neighborhood uh, houses a significant number of historical homes, um, that's why there that neighborhood is alone given that exemption whereas I, I other suspect, areas i suspect that that's the main reason why it's only allowed within specifically within the wilson neighborhood unless uh, a property outside of the wilson neighborhood comes before this commission and requests uh the uh property be designated as a or that it be designated as having a significant heritage feature so that it will be allowed to uh operate as a, either a homestay or as an inn okay I see. And, and is that something that's common outside of uh, Oxnard and no. other cities to have significant historical feature be a requirement to have a bed and breakfast? Uh, based on the research that staff conducted, um, I don't think the significant heritage feature was prevalent or a requirement. Um, one, one of the things we did look at was the parking and the parking would seem to be pretty um, pretty consistent with what the city has, but uh, typically the significant heritage feature wasn't something that was, that, that seemed to, it seemed to be uh, a requirement. I'm sorry, Mr. Figueroa. Uh, again, all participants need to have their microphones muted at all times. Again, all microphones need to be muted at all times until your turn to speak. So uh, I'll, I'll just briefly repeat again, um, ba based on staff's research, the significant heritage feature didn't seem to be something that was consistent throughout the jurisdictions that we studied. Uh, the parking was, uh, however, the, the requirement that I have a significant feature wasn't necessarily a requirement for all of the uh, jurisdictions that staff uh, analyzed. Okay. Thank you. That was a point of interest for me, but I know that the parking is the specific reason that we're discussing this point right now. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Meyer. Commissioner Nash. Thank you, Chair Chairman Chavez. To follow up on what Commissioner Meyer said a little bit, why aren't the B and Bs? Why why couldn't they just be regulated under the umbrella of short term rentals? Uh, Commissioner Nash, it's an interesting question. Uh, the way that our code is currently written is we have a short term rental uh, designation, and then we also have our bed and breakfast regulations. In theory, someone could. Pick, if someone had an option for either one of those, um, they can pick and choose. Not everyone has the opportunity to pick the B and B regulation, um, so most people don't even have that option. The main difference between the short-term rental uh, designation and the B and B uh, designation is our short-term rental designations currently has a maximum um, duration where it's only 100 days total out of the year someone can use their property as a short-term rental. A bed and breakfast does not have that cap. Okay, great, great answer. Uh, great answer. Um, thank you very much. 
Um, a, a couple of other minor items. Uh, on page seven of 11 on the staff report, uh, last paragraph, last sentence, it reads, city council members voiced concern and displeasure when staff presented amendments to the city's ADU regulations, including parking reductions that were required to be uh, consistent with state mandates. If, if, if you could um, expand on that a little bit, uh, what, what, what the council members' concerns were besides parking. And Commissioner Nash, I'll, I'll jump into this one. Um, as I'm recalling the conversation, the main displeasure was that the state was telling us what we could or could not do. Um, and with that, uh, there were certain limitations that um, we, were allowed, we were told we could not venture into. Uh, parking was definitely a big part of that conversation. Uh, some of that had to do with the square footages of what could be allowed one way or another. Uh, uh, and, and you know, just to add to what's, what uh, Mr. Colwitz is, is uh, uh, identifying, uh, it was just a total loss of, of local control. Uh, the the way in terms of how to permit the ADUs, uh, they're essentially we are forced to approve them. There is no uh, um, there's no community involvement. Um, the type of entitlements, the type of payments. Uh, there was no consideration for staff time. So it was really the overall was the loss of, of, of local control to govern these um, ADUs. And so the state felt that the solution, which was a really a one size fits all was adequate for all jurisdictions, which you know clearly it's not. Okay, so so it was just it, it was mainly just um, anger over uh, state mandates, um, telling local jurisdictions what what to do. On page um, eight of eleven, um, second to last paragraph, first line. I, this this is just a typo. You, um, uh, the committee, unanimously agreed to initiate a, a ZAT and. A, it took me back because I'd never encountered that acronym before, but it's supposed to be ZTA, correct? Correct. Okay. Now on page nine of 11, under E1, the last sentence where it reads, excessive amounts of paving to meet parking management shall not be allowed. Is that problematic in that it doesn't really define what excessive amount is? Hi, Commissioner Nash, that, that could be uh, uh, problematic. Uh, if it, we were talking about residential development where we need to have objective standards, I would say the answer would clearly be yes. When we are not dealing with uh, residential development and a bed and breakfast would be a commercial use that happens to be in a residence, um, it's okay for there to be subjectivity. Uh, you're essentially providing the uh, community development director the ability to use their discretion as they determine what that may be. That said, um, we are proposing an ordinance amendment to the planning commission to consider the underlying language that you're reading is what's being proposed. So if the planning commission as a whole feels that that needs to be modified, you would be able to do so. Uh, but I will also point out that that language uh, is effectively a copy paste from the same parking requirements that the larger bed and breakfasts are allowed to uh, utilize in their own right. Um, so if we change that, there might be an there not might be there would be an inconsistency between the small bed and breakfasts that are before you compared to the larger bed and breakfasts. Yeah, thank you for that answer. I, I don't think it's a problem for the planning commission because we would not be the ones to, um, you know, <laughs> be included in, in litigation, I assume. Um, it, it's more of a problem for the, for the planning staff uh, due, due, to, due to the lack of clarity on that one issue. Um, that concludes my, my, uh, my questions for staff. Uh, thank you, Chair Chavez. Thank you, Commissioner Nash, for your question. Commissioner Dr. Lopez. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, two quick questions. Uh, I believe staff presentation said that uh, the city currently did not have any BNB operations. 
Have we ever had a B any BNB operations or regulations uh, in 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 our history? <laughs> Uh, I, I would not know whether we ever did have any BBs operating in the city. Um, obviously, we, when we looked at the records, we were looking at recent records. Uh, in terms of the regulations, these regulations have been in the um, codified for quite a while now. Um, so they, they've been pretty consistent in our develop in our zoning ordinance. Great, thank you. And then a second question and was following up a little bit on Commissioner Meyer's line of questioning. Um, is it, and for, just for clarification, so these regulations, uh, is it for the entire Wilson neighborhood or more specifically just the, the historic district within the Wilson neighborhood? The, the entire Wilson neighborhood. Okay, perfect. In addition to, you know, having the historical feature that would allow for anybody to. Correct. To, okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner Dr. Lopez for your questions. Any additional questions from the commission? Seeing and hearing none, we'll go ahead and open the public hearing portion for this item. Uh, Madam Secretary, do we have any um, speakers for this item? Uh, no, we don't. Okay, so we'll go ahead again, once again, in accordance with AB 361, we'll pause for three minutes to allow any additional members of the public to join our meeting. Once again, you are requested to email planning at oxnard.org or visit the city's website to fill out a speaker form. This is a time period of three minutes. And Chair Chavez, thank you again for leading us through this item. As we have the count, uh, uh, countdown uh, happening before our eyes, we'll uh, conduct a, a review of, of those that have reached out to us and give a real-time update uh, with about you know anywhere between 30 seconds to 60 seconds left, and then have Dee give the final announcement. Um, and the only other thing I'll say in, in this time for anyone that's joining us late to this meeting, um, item number F4, uh, we received an applicant request to continue that item uh, to November 4th. Um, so we just want to let you know that if you're only joining us now. Thank you, Mr. Kowitz. And we would also like to recognize uh, Mr. Paul Early, Assistant City Attorney that's joining us this evening um, as Mr. Roselle is on very much needed um, vacation. So um, welcome Mr. Early for joining us this evening. Thank you, it's nice to be back again. Okay, and we're under 30 seconds at this point in time. So uh, Dee, if you could uh, let us know in 20 seconds or so if we received any requests to speak, that would be wonderful. Chair Chavez and Planning Commissioners, I have not received any speakers. Thank you, Madam Secretary, for that update. Um, we'll go to uh, staff if they have any additional comments, but I'm pretty sure we've touched on everything, but just give you that courtesy if there's anything additional that you would like to add before commissions move into deliberation. Uh, that at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Okay. Commissioners will now move into deliberation at this time. And if there's no deliberations, I would look for a motion on the item. Uh, Vice Chair Rick. Uh, thank you, Chair Chavez. Um, I believe this is a, the recommendation is a measured and limited expense of flexibility that you'd think a corner property could and probably should already have. It still has to go through the development review permit process and further determinations at that time could still deny a parking space on the non frontage street of the property. I plan to support the recommendation as put in our agenda if and when the motion is made. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Rejo. Are there any additional deliberations on this item? Uh, Commissioner Dr. Lopez. You know, I, I, I have to say, I, I, I like the, the concept. I like the ideas. I like the potential of, you know, with all the efforts the city and, and others throughout the city are doing to try and increase, uh, you know, visitors and, and tourists, uh, you know, to, to support, you know, bed and breakfast and inns, uh, particularly, uh, you know, not only to the Wilson and the historic district, but uh, certainly to some of the uh, many features and attractions that our city has not only near and around downtown, but uh, certainly, uh, you know, at the harbor and, uh, you know, throughout our, our community. Uh, so uh, I have to agree with uh, Vice Chair Arrejo that I do believe that it is also uh, well-reasoned, researched, and measured, uh, and I also uh, am prepared uh, to support. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Commissioner Dr. Lopez. Any additional deliberations on this item? Seeing and uh, hearing none, I'll be looking for a motion for this item. Commissioner Meyer. Thank you, Chair Chavez. Uh, I would like to put forward the motion as stated uh, in our uh, report um, that we find Project name, bed and breakfast, parking regulations, planning and zoning permit number 21-580-05 um, to be uh, exempt from environmental review pursuant to the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA guidelines 15060C2 and 3 and 15061B3 and to be adopt resolution 2021-XX recommending that the city council approve planning and zoning permit number 21-580-05, zone text amendment allowing bed and breakfast homestays containing no more than two guest bedrooms located on corner lots may credit the non-primary street frontage toward the parking requirement with 25 linear feet equal to one parking space. Thank you for that motion, Commissioner Meyer. Uh, Commissioner Dr. Lopez. Um, I was going to second, but I'll go ahead and yield to Vice Chair Arrejo in case he wants to add anything or, uh, you know, he can, he can second. Um, thank you, Commissioner Lopez. I defer back to you um, and I'll let you have to second on it. I'll second, second the motion. Thank you. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, it's been moved and seconded for the project name bed and breakfast parking regulations um, to be approved. Um, based off of staff's recommendation and find the project to be exempt from the environment's review pursuant to the California Environmental Quality Act guidelines 15060 C subsection two and three and 15061 B subsection three and adopt the resolution 2021 double X recommending that the city council approve planning and zoning permit number 21-580-05 zone text amendment allowing bed and breakfast homestays containing no more than two guest bed no more than two guest bedrooms located on the corner lots may credit the non-primary street frontage towards the parking requirement with 25 linear feet equal to one parking space. Is there any, um, delib any deliberation on that motion? Seeing and hearing none, Madam Secretary, if we can have the roll call, please. Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Commissioner Lopez? Yes. Vice Chair Wejo? Aye. Commissioner Connolly? Yes. Commissioner Nash? Aye. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Chair Chavez? Aye. 
motion passes. Thank you for that, Madam Secretary. Uh, we'll go ahead and move to our next item, um, which is F2. Um, at this time, our vice chair has recused himself from the next two items. Um, F2, project name, Yuma Way, California, LLC, doing business as Relief on Vine, commercial cannabis, business retail special use permit, planning and zoning permit number 21-516-08, retail. A request to permit the operations of a commercial cannabis retail facility within the existing 1,320 square foot commercial suite of a 7,682 square foot multi-tenant commercial building on a 0.63 acre site located at 2544 North Vineyard Avenue within the general commercial plan development zone. Proposed development includes tenant improvements, installation of an interior wall partitioning, plumbing upgrades, upgrades to an existing fire alarm system, security upgrades to the existing building, and installation of a new secure doors, windows, Cannabis retail operations will be conducted between the hours of 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily. This is filed by Jessica Ruven. Um, our city staff person is Jose Coyle, associate planner. The recommendation to the planning commission is to find the project to be categorically exempt from environmental review pursuant to CEQA Guidelines section 15301, existing facilities, and adopt the resolution 2021 XX approving planning and zoning permit number 21-516-08, special use permit, cannabis retail subjects to certain findings and conditions. Once again, to my colleagues and to the public, a pre-recorded presentation is available on the city's website and YouTube channel in accordance with measure M. At this time, we'll go to staff if they have anything additional to provide before moving into the applicant's presentation. Hello, Chair Chavez. This is uh, Scott Colwitz, and I'm going to go ahead and, and share uh, a, uh, an announcement that we did receive two communications on this that uh, we did not get out to the Planning Commission. So I want to uh, apologize for that. That was the intent today. Um, but I wanted to read these into the record for your collective benefits, if we could. So the first one, and after we after this meeting, we'll still post these online for the benefit of, of the public to uh, be able to review them after the meeting too. So the first one comes from uh, Nancy Lindholm of the West Ventura County Business Alliance. And uh, it's, it's a brief letter, so I'm just gonna read it in its entirety here for all of you. It says, please accept this letter of support on behalf of the applicants uh, for Yuma Way DBA, uh, relief on Vine for a retail cannabis facility. We have been working with Jessica Rubin for nearly two years as she and her team have navigated through the selection process in Oxnard. It is my opinion that they are a safe, secure, and competent operator. The location that they have selected provides convenient access for cannabis customers while still being secluded from minors. As a regular customer of the dry cleaning business within the shopping center at the proposed location, I believe the presence of Relief on Vine will bring life to the strip mall that truly needs an infusion of customer traffic. The Yuma Way team has already demonstrated their commitment to the Oxnard community. They are supporting local charities. They have been reaching out to their neighbors and residents to address any concerns about their business and its location. In addition, I'm pleased to welcome another woman-owned business in Oxnard. They should be commended for their, uh, for their commitments to diversity and local hiring. I understand they are already contra uh, contracting with several Oxnard small businesses. We truly appreciate the commitment to Oxnard and ask that you find the proposed retail establishment conforms with all requirements to move the project forward. Thank you for your consideration, Nancy Lindholm. So that's the first communications that we received. Uh, the second one is even shorter. It's an unsigned email that simply says, uh, we object to the plans for a cannabis business at 2544 North Vineyard Avenue. We already have uh, traffic congestion on Vineyard Avenue, period. And with that, uh, staff does not have any other additional comments for this item. Thank you, Mr. Colwitz, for that. We'll go ahead and go to our applicant team. If you may please um, introduce the members that are part of your team and staff will be bringing up your presentation. Absolutely, thank you so much. We appreciate you guys. 
So uh, my name is Jessica Rubain. I am the Chief Compliance Officer for Yuma Way, CA LLC, the parent company for Relief on Vine. And with me here tonight is also our CEO, Lita Tsaluk, as well as our CFO, uh, Kirill Merkulov. And give me just one moment here. So um, I just can't see if you guys see our presentation up on the screen. Um, okay, great. So uh, as I stated, I'm the Chief Compliance Officer for Yuma Way, operating under the DBA, Relief on Vine. And um, so let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. And um, I'll tell you a little bit about our executive team. Rita Saluk, Kirill Merkulov, and myself bring a wealth of expertise to the businesses we own and operate. Since 2016, we have organically built a booming enterprise employing more than 100 cannabis professionals. We bring over 172 years of combined experience working in highly legally regulated industries, including legal cannabis, healthcare, law, finance, real estate, land development, and technology. We are a 100% immigrant and majority woman owned business. Next slide, please. Together, the team has 41 active cannabis licenses in multiple states, including numerous retail, cultivation facilities, and the nation's first consumption lounge. We currently operate seven retail cannabis stores and have more than double that in development. We are a company that prides itself on being number one in compliance, education, and social equity. It is our mission to support cannabis education and responsible consumption. We have been called upon by numerous government regulators across the nation, and our pioneering practices have yielded great media exposure, having appeared in over 50 publications, including the Associated Press, LA Times, and the Washington Post. Next slide, please. Our Oxnard location will be conveniently open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., seven days a week. It is easily accessible from the 101 and has multiple public transportation options available. The store will occupy approximately 1,300 square feet of currently vacant space and will be designed to blend with other existing businesses in the surrounding adult-geared shopping center. No cannabis products will be visible from the exterior nor will graphics depicting cannabis be included in any signage. Next slide, please. The site contains sufficient parking and bicycle racks for customers, including ADA space directly in front of the store. The plaza is well lit and well maintained. Congestion free traffic flow will be ensured via efficient service and transaction processing, online ordering and delivery options and further optimized by positioning the vendor lobby in the rear. Overall, safety and security will be enhanced through every element of operations and design. Next slide, please. Our safety and security plans are prepared by professional security and fire consultants. They include 24 hour video surveillance, armed guards, security, and fire alarm monitoring. Incident logs will be kept to document any and all complaints and will be addressed by management within 24 hours. Rigorous training on all company pro protocols are provided to employees, including redundant ID verification to ensure that no minors may enter the premises. Next slide, please. Ingrained in Yuma's philosophy is giving voice to the people that we serve. We constantly seek feedback from all of you, our neighbors, customers, and business stakeholders in the community. We already conducted door-to-door -door outreach campaigns to nearby homes and businesses, collecting 80 signat 87 signatures for our petition, and plan to host pre-operational open houses. To further strengthen ties to the community, the general manager will reside within minutes of the facility, and I, as community relations liaison, will be available 24 hours a day to address any questions or concerns. Next slide, please. At Relief on Vine, we take seriously the idea that to think local, you need to be local. In addition to having a requirement for local management, 
We are committed to ensuring that at least 80% of hires are residents of the city with bilingual staff at all times. Currently, 73% of our workforce is comprised of women and minorities, and we will ensure our Oxnard location maintains a similar commitment to diversity. We offer over 70 hours of on-the-job training, a path to success program for rapid promotions within our organization, and competitive benefits, including healthcare, paid time off, and transportation reimbursement. We support unionized labor and have partnered with UFCW for collective bargaining. Next slide, please. Our commitment and community involvement is well underway. We have hand delivered lunch to the frontline workers at St. John's Medical Center. That's me in the picture over on the right. Fed over 300 families through our contribution to food share of Ventura County donated to an Oxnard youth program and joined the Oxnard Chamber of Commerce. We pledged to create our own community impact fund with 2% of profits, allocate 400 hours of paid employee volunteer time and plan to make a $250,000 initial contribution to the Oxnard Community Reinvestment Fund with additional donations to follow. We have already identified local charities we would like to support, including the Boys and Girls Club, which I know is represented here tonight. We support local businesses and the use of local vendors. We are excited to be, become a part of the Oxnard community and we welcome your questions and comments. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll go ahead and go to our commissioners if they have any um, questions for either the staff or the applicant. Um, and once again, just clearly state which one you're directing those questions to. Commissioner Nash. Thank you, Chair um, Chavez. Two issues. Um, do you require your employees to be bilingual? Um, that's a great question. We do not require all of our staff to be bilingual, but we ensure that somebody who is bilingual is on staff. Thank you. Um, I think it's, it's uh, important in, um, in light of the demographics of our city, especially that, that neighborhood. Uh, is there a union trying to organize um, dispensary uh, workers into a uh, collective bargaining unit? Are, are you aware of anything going on since you appear to be nationwide? Um, I'm, could you repeat the question? I'm not sure I understood it. Is, 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 is there currently a union trying to organize dispensary workers? Uh -huh. On a national level? Yeah, or local uh, or any at any level. Well, um, we actually have an LPA with UFCW 770 in Oxnard. So um, there are definitely unions across the country who are representing cannabis employees. And uh, we certainly plan to work with those organizations where appropriate, including our Oxnard location. So if your employees came to you and, 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 and said that they want to join a union, you, you would not be opposed to that? We are completely supportive of union labor, absolutely. Okay, thank you. That's, that's, that's all I have on Chairman Chavez. Thank you, Commissioner Nash for your questions. Commissioner Dr. Lopez. I had a question for staff. There was a, a a statement uh, during the presentation where it was speaking about the back of the building uh, that was legal non it was a legal non-conforming requirement. Can you clarify uh, what what that was? Sure, um, Dr. Commissioner Lopez. Uh, so what I was referring to on the staff presentation that was pre-recorded was that they will be using a legal non-conforming loading zone along the back side of the property. And that is accessed um, through the back and it's shared uh, for all the tenant spaces there. And then from that loading bay, our loading space, um, they will go ahead and um, unload and offload product from the back of house. There's a service store per, for each tenant space. And so the back entry was simply be for, for deliveries, uh, you know, either to the, the, the business or for any delivery service going out. It's not going to be like an entryway for the general public to, to enter. Correct. The, the shopping center basically just fronts Vineyard um, and has a, a driveway and en um, entrance off of uh, Ventura Boulevard. However, there is no entrance for um, the general public to enter through the backside. 
And then the property line runs along the backside. So any parking that you see back there is actually for the three-story building um, adjacent to this property. I see. Thank you. And a question for Ms. Uh, Rubin. Um, the presentation you included uh, where you were talking about uh, staff and workforce, one of the benefits uh, that you mentioned and highlighted was the 50% uh, health care coverage. Uh, has that been something that 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 is a standard? Uh, is that a standard for, for your company with some of your other uh, locations? Or, or has that been, uh, you know, discussed and negotiated with, with uh, UFCW at all? So uh, we haven't discussed our specific insurance uh, plans with the UFCW quite yet. Um, so if they do have other suggestions uh, that they would like us to implement, we will definitely do that. Um, but uh, that is what we currently have uh, in place at some of our other locations. Okay, great. Thank you. No further questions. Appreciate it. Thank you, Commissioner Dr. Lopez for your questions. Any additional questions from the commission? I had a couple of questions, um, one for staff. Um, was it written into the code when we were establishing the cannabis that um, a certain distance between cannabis locations? Because um, this commission did approve one that is technically up the street from this one. Yeah, I, I, I can go ahead and speak on that behalf. Um, uh, Chair Chavez. Um, so basically, there is no um, minimum distance between this sort of use, this cannabis retail use. The only um, guidance that we have is basically the sensitive uses, um, the 600 foot buffer, um, but not for other cannabis retailers. Um, there, there is no minimum distance for that. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Swanson, our, our representative from the police department, um, at our last meeting, um, I had requested um, some statistics with the crime in the area. Were you able to um, gather those for these um, items tonight? Yes, I was. Um, can you just briefly touch on the, the crime statistics for this area? Yes, in the case of uh, uh, Yuma Way, uh, they had 36 incidents during 26 or during 2020. And the citywide average is 41.3, so they're under the citywide average. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Swenson. Um, for the applicant team, um, you mentioned that you did some community outreach, did door to door, got about 80 signatures. Um, at the begin, at the top of the item, uh, our our staff manager, uh, Mr. Colwitz, had read one communication that came in that was opposing. Um, your project. What outreach has been um, taken by your team with the other property owners or businesses in the, at the location? So I actually have personally walked around to um, pretty much all of the neighboring businesses going uh, beyond 500 feet. And I've spoken uh, to all of those business owners. I've actually not had a single negative response from any business owners in the area. Uh, everybody was very supportive and um, that was definitely the case with the business owners, absolutely. And um, I do wanna highlight, actually, I noticed in that comment, um, it said that they were opposed to a cannabis business on Vineyard, not in particular to our uh, specific application. Okay. Um just kind of piggybacking off of what Commissioner Dr. Lopez mentioned in regards to the benefits, um, it, it said 50% in your PowerPoint presentation. Now that's 50% that your company is providing and that 50% that the employee has to pay towards their um, health, medical, uh, medical, vision, and dental. So uh, that is what has currently been made available in some of our other locations. But um, every location has its own um, things that we would offer, and uh, we would definitely be open to um, to changing that policy for often. Okay, I well, I'll save those comments for deliberation. Um, last question: um, You mentioned that there is a manager that is going to be within minutes if an incident was to take place. Is any 
of the leadership of the company, such as the three of you, none of you or anybody, the fourth person or fifth person in the company won't be living in the area, correct? It's just simply the store manager. Actually, uh, that is not entirely true. I do plan on having a residence in Oxnard upon opening. So I will be very much participating actively in the operation of the store. I appreciate that comment. Um, Commissioner Meyer, I saw your hand up. Um, did you change your mind? Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, I um, reconsidered that I was going to have more that were comments for deliberation rather than questions. Thank you for that, thank Commissioner you. Meyer. All right, thank you. Um, if there's no further questions from the commission, seeing and hearing none, we'll go ahead and open the public hearing portion of this item. Um, and the first person that I have on the list, um, hmm, is Iman, and I apologize, I'm gonna butcher this last name, um, Zara Fizidi. Hi, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, you have three minutes, okay, I yeah, apologize. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, no, that was better than most. Um, we are the um, property managers and developers of the site, and we just wanted to come out and speak for Relief or Yuma Way. Uh, we developed the site in 1990, so we've been, we've been there since it was land, and we were approached by several cannabis um, dispensaries that wanted to develop the site. We turned them down, but when Relief did come, we were so impressed by their team and what they wanted to do for the community and the local vendors that we decided that it was something that we wanted to, to, to see on site. They have not only outreached to everyone in Oxnard and made an effort to be local, but they're incredibly professional. And in terms of traffic on Vineyard, I mean, we welcome it. We are looking for something to revitalize the building as much as possible since COVID happened. It's been, you know, it's been tough to say the least. And like I said, we've been there quite a long time. And Jessica and her team have gone out to, she's, she's made a concerted effort to stay local. And for someone who's been local for so long, we, we appreciate it because we are betting on the city and we want everyone in the building to be betting on the city as well. And traffic has never been a problem. Parking hasn't been a problem. So um, with a team as professional uh, and as specialized as them, we, we want to see them succeed because we know that they're going to make everyone else succeed. And we think that is going to help the city as a whole. So we are in full support. And we just wanted to, to, to voice that here tonight. So... If you guys have any questions for us, like I said, we've been around a long time and we are here to answer them. Thank you very much for your comments. Um, we'll go to our next speaker, um, Pablo Joel Garcia. All right, can you hear me? Yes, you have three minutes. Thank you, uh, Pablo Joel Garcia, and I am um, from the. I'm representing both the architecture firm working with uh, Yuma Way, uh, which is Onyx Creative, and I am also a citizen of uh, or resident of uh, of Oxnard and a former family business owner. Our, our family owned, uh, we were part owners in uh, La Gloria and also Burrito Express and among other restaurants. And uh, it's just been a real pleasure working with, uh, with Jessica over the last year and a half. Uh, we have uh, experience with our company, working with other, other companies like, like Yuma Way. And uh, we are very, very careful about who we work with because of the nature and the sensitivity of, uh, of the regulations and obviously the, their, their professionalism really shines through and it's, it's just been a real pleasure to work with them. I, I see that they are very much committed to, to Oxnard and to, and to their doing the best job possible, not, not just for their business, obviously their, their success is gonna lend itself to the success of everybody around them. So, and I think that's really 
really indicative of, of their approach. And we um, are very much in support of the project. And uh, if there's any questions regarding our area, um, I'll, be, I'll be around for, for that as well. Thank you, Mr. Garcia, for your comments. Um, just as a reminder to those that are participating on the call, if you would like to participate in this item, you can use the raise hand feature and prior to us moving into our three minute period. I do see a hand raised from Hugo Alans. Hello? Yes, you have three minutes. Hello, my name is Hugo Alanez. I represent, I'm CEO and president of George Lopez Chingon Bakery in the city of Oxnard. Um, there's just a couple of concerns from the community that have been reached out to me in the last several weeks from this location. Um, one is also, what is the, Cal the Children Development Center considered? Since it's a CDR where they have um, children like the daycare center, and it's a preschool developmental. Is that considered um, a school, or is that is that not? We can't actually a, a, um, address any of your questions, but um, we'll have staff address them afterwards. So you okay. can go ahead with your comments, and then we'll have staff respond. Okay. So that was one of the concerns, and also in the area um, where this where this parking lot is behind is the real um, the a real school district. I just want to know input with having a dispensary in front of them um, and with drive time with um, 101 and a bottleneck we already have a problem there and especially from everybody coming home and now that we're going to have Amazon coming and how many employees were they going to employ for parking and the bottleneck situation in the CDR was one of the concerns and the, uh, for the community outreach, um, we're hearing a lot about Boys and Girls Club, but there's also other um, foundations in Oxnard, such as the Oxnard Police Activities League, there's um, South Wind. So um, if we could also always, if we could get more into the city of Oxnard. Um, I understand Relief is a huge nationwide company. Um, they have um, stores across the United States, um, of course, with the developmental um, company that's supporting them, architectural company that's supporting them also. Um, I just would like to know um, a little bit more of how they're going to ensure that the 1% is going to stay in their community. How are they going to um, try to help out in the sense with the homelessness, with um, recovery centers that are popping up everywhere? And that's it. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you for your comments. Um, I do not see any additional hands raised from those that are participating for this item. Again, this is item F2, Yuma Way, California LLC, commercial cannabis business retail. Um, I see uh, Pastor, uh, see Pastor Terrell Penny up and down. So um, staff, if we can just bring him on just to see if he uh, wanted to speak on this item or not. Hello? Yes. Uh, yeah, this is Pastor Terrell Penny's wife. Okay, do you want to speak on this item? Yes. Okay, um, you can just mute whatever device you're listening to the meeting on so that there's no feedback, and then we'll have you speak for three minutes. Mute, mute this device? Whichever one you have the audio playing back on. Ms. Penny? Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Go ahead with your comments. First, I'd like to say good evening and thank you for this time that you've given to me for to be able to address this panel. Um, I've been on here probably every time that I can get on because this is personal to me. I have a son and I'm trying to um, say this without being in tears, but I have a son that has decided that he has 
some sickness that he needs cannabis in his life. He was um, a, la a lively kid. He was going to college and he has been going to college probably now for the last 16 years because he can't stop taking the cannabis that he has been believing that he needs. I, I'm a nurse. I've lived with this child. I'm not a perfect mom. I've tried to raise my children to fear the Lord and to trust him and to do the things that's right and to believe what is true. I don't know what I can do. Who's, who's gonna help the parents that have to look at their children and see that they're not functioning the way that a child should be functioning? Who's gonna help the parent that has to look at their child and when they see their lips turning black, knowing what they're doing is hurting their body? Who's gonna help this parent that has to lay down at night wondering if their children or grandchildren are gonna be okay, if this child is gonna go off like some other kid went off thinking that they need to hurt themselves and their people around them. I take this very personal because I have been dealing with it. I don't know how people can think that it's okay. I don't, I don't know what else to do. I don't know if you have therapy for the children that have to deal with the parents that are up and down because they think they need this. But it's real to me. And I don't know if you have children or family that have or gone through this, but I am an advocate that I'm praying to God and I'm asking him to help me, help my child, help all the children that I know who are dealing with this and have been 30 seconds left that they cannot get off of this because they need it. I have hope in God. My husband passes a church and I, I, my scripture that I, I read this morning was my flesh and my heart failing, but God is my strength of my heart and my portion forever. Pray for me, help me to help me understand my child because this is personal to me. Thank you, Ms. Penny, for your comment. Um, at this time, commissioners, in accordance with AB 361, we'll go ahead and pause for, for three minutes to allow any additional members of the public to be able to join our meeting. Once again, um, if you would like to join our meeting and speak on this item, this is item F2, Yuma Way, California, LLC, commercial business cannabis retail that will be located in North Oxnard off of Vineyard Avenue. Um, please email planning at oxnard.org or visit the city's website to fill out the speaker form. This is a time for three minutes. And Chair Chavez and members of the commission, this is uh, Scott Kolwitz uh, at the chambers. Uh, while we are going through the three minute period, staff did wanna to respond to one of the technical questions that was asked uh, during uh, public comment. Um, in particular, um, Hugo Alaniz um, asked a question about this project and the proximity to a daycare facility. Uh, so Jose is gonna go ahead and respond to that. Uh, the other comments and questions um, that were provided, uh, we're not intending to respond to any of the other ones, but of course, if uh, the Planning Commission had some uh, follow-up questions for us during deliberations, we would be available to you for that. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Jose, and then as he wraps up his comments, we'll double check um, if any other public speakers have uh, signed up today. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Okay, so in regards to the daycare, when um, staff reviewed this project, um, the nearest uh, sensitive use, um, which was a commercial daycare center, um, was the Child Development Service, uh, Child Development Resources, Julie Irving Head Start Center, uh, which is located approximately 786 feet northwest of the project. Um, so this is on the staff report. 
um, uh, the minimum requirement for the city um, for it to be outside of that establishment is 600. Um, so they're well within 186 feet away from um, a sensitive use for the city. Um, other things to note are um, that this uh, daycare center basically would be um, behind um, and it would be along the Ventura um, Boulevard um, roadway. Uh, no other sensitive use was found um, when conducting our, our research um, and analysis for this uh, particular retailer. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Um, Chair Chavez and Planning Commissioners, I have not received any additional speakers. Thank you, Madam Secretary, for that. Um, I believe staff already responded, so but we'll go ahead and go to Commissioner Dr. Lopez. I actually stepped away uh, for a restroom break and I missed what staff said. Could we uh, have them please repeat the answers? I heard something about one of the questions that was asked about CC, the DNR, I believe. Sure. Um, so to go ahead and uh, backtrack here, uh, Dr. Lopez, um, essentially um, the question was asked about sensitive uses, in particular the commercial daycare center that's located adjacent to this property. Um, I had mentioned that in the staff report, we identified that the child care center is named Child Development Resources Julie Irving Head Start Center. And this uh, daycare center is located 786 feet. The code uh, minimum is 600 feet away from this type of sensitive use. Um, so they're away by more than 186 feet. Um, so they meet the minimum requirements um, to go ahead and operate. Um, and in addition, um, we went ahead and had an extensive sort of analysis and review and there wasn't any other sensitive use um, that was uh, established at the time of their selection for a cannabis retailer. Great, thank you for the clarification, appreciate it. Yep. Uh, Commissioner Nash. Thank you, Chair Chavez. Could staff please refresh my memory on what the procedure is if a sensitive use decides to say, move in next door to a dispensary? Does the dispensary then become a non-conforming use or does, does the planning staff tell the sensitive use that, hey, you can't, you can't, you can't locate here? I'm a little unclear on that, on that, how that process works. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that, Commissioner Nash. Uh, so to answer your question, um, during the selection process, this did come up. Um, and essentially, if we awarded already a cannabis retailer a permit, any other establishing, uh, establishment moving in would subject the site to be non-conforming. However, if the retailer is a good operator and they keep renewing and there's no issues, then they're establishing illegal non-conforming use. Um, and so they're not going to be subject to stop operation. Okay, so a sensitive a sensitive uh, use could move ne could could move in next door to a dispensary. Then, correct. That could be a possibility. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any additional questions from the commission? Um, the staff. It was mentioned um, during public comments in regards to the real school district. Um, it's my understanding that the real school district um, district office um, is no longer at that building. Um, can you confirm or deny or, you know, we'll get back to that? No, um, yeah, they relocated their offices off of Solar Drive. Um, and so they were in the midst of transitioning while the permits were being conducted. I'm not exactly sure where they are on that status, but yes, they were in the process of relocating um, the school district location. I appreciate that. Um, Finally, uh, Mr. Coyle, um, is there any additional comments that you want to provide before the commission moves into um, a deliberation? Not at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, commissioners, any, uh, we'll move into deliberation at this time. Um, uh, I'm so sorry, uh, Chair Chavez. Uh, would it be possible for our CEO to address the commissioners one more time before deliberation? I can go ahead and allow a minute time um, 
if you can wrap up your comments in a minute before we move into deliberations, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. That'll be our CEO, Rita Tsui. Okay, so the time will be displayed on the screen. Um, so just be mindful of that time. So you'll have one minute. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I appreciate it. I just want to quickly comment uh, back uh, to the pastor's wife uh, who's going through difficult times because this is our passion. We are uh, investing a lot of resources to cannabis education and responsible consumption. And people going, a lot of people going through hard times right now with mental health. And we think that we be able to at least offer all the resources that we have. And if she wants to get in touch with us afterwards, we will be able to help her out as much as we can. And uh, we, we do we also wanted to add that we will provide a philanthropic initiatives to a lot of Oxnard communities and it's very close to our heart as well. Thank you so much. Thank you for those comments. Commissioners, deliberations on, on this item. Commissioner Connolly. I just really quickly wanted uh, to, to thank the applicant. I know we're, um, we've done a few of these um, cannabis applications now, and I don't think I'm unique in saying that I, I really didn't know what to expect when we kind of got into this realm. Um, but every, every couple of weeks, I'm really blown away by everyone's presentation, um, specifically with relief. I love that you guys had a very clean and straightforward presentation. You addressed ADA accessibility, which I don't think we've heard before, which is obviously very important. Um, and then definitely your marketing being very clean and not um, having any, any cannabis paraphernalia, I think is, is to your advantage. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. And then obviously your commitment to diversity. We love, uh, we love that in the city of Oxnard. And then, uh, Lastly, I know we talked about traffic and, and we put we postponed a, another agenda item to add a drive through to discuss a drive through Starbucks right across the way from where you guys are proposing to be. And, and as we all know, that may be a little more uh, interfering with traffic than a than a cannabis dis dispensary. So I don't think traffic is going to be an issue in regard to you guys um in your in your neat little shopping area so thank you again for your presentation and i i just wanted to say that i do support um you guys in this this proposal so thank you thank you commissioner Connolly, for your comments commissioner meyer thank you chair chavez um yes i'm uh, glad to see that there is um, a, a cannabis business that is going to be run by a team that has a long history of success in the field um, and at this location, uh, choosing this location specifically because it is uh, an area that I know that has been challenged to maintain tenants and um, to develop traffic. Um, I actually work at Child Development Resources, so I know exactly where the, the child care center is that was referenced by the question. Um, and I also have driven by this area almost on a daily basis. Um, one, one point of caution is that because the area, what the, the shopping center did not have a lot of uh, uh, cars parked in the area, um, a lot of people uh, do periodically use that uh, the drive through the um, basically the parking lot as a means to uh, cut the corner of Vineyard and Ventura Boulevard um, due to the traffic related to. Um, vineyard and the 101 at that point. So I think it is important to be careful and to be thoughtful in terms of pedestrian safety um, at that site, um, because it is a bit of an unusual shape and location in terms of um, moving cars through. So um, that's just a note from personal experience, uh, having uh, spent a fair bit amount of time on that site. Um, I appreciate um, this. Uh, uh, Ms. Saliuk, the CEO's comments in regard to um, compassion for the, the speaker and consideration of cannabis education, responsible use, um, and uh, putting resources towards that. That's, um, that's very commendable. And I, I appreciate you um, putting that forward. Um, and I, I was going to comment in regard to, um, it's important for the public to be aware that um, the city of Oxnard is not choosing whether or not cannabis businesses can locate in the city of Oxnard. We are 
simply uh, seeing if they meet our criteria, given the number that we've allowed um, through regulation to uh, exist. And uh, the decision on whether or not cannabis cannot, can be um, sold and dispensed here and used recreationally was one that all California voters made uh, five years ago, I think, 2016, I believe. Um, so that is not something that's in our hands in terms of saying yes or no um, to the whole issue of cannabis uh, in itself. Um, so what we're talking about here is very specifically this business in this location um, conforming to the requirements uh, of our city code in that regard. Um, so with all of that said, um, I uh, feel that I can support this business. I, I have hopes that it will increase traffic and be of benefit to the other tenants of that shopping center. Um, and likewise, as per um, Commissioner Connolly, I don't see it being a particular concern for traffic, uh, given that there's very minimal traffic currently in that shopping center, um, especially in comparison to what would be coming up um, across the way when we explore the, the Starbucks drive-through on that would be kitty corner to this location. But um, with all that said, it looks well thought out and um, I can support this. Thank you for your comments, Commissioner Meyer. Commissioner Nash. Thank you, um, Chairman Chavez. Um, a couple of comments. My entire um, effort in uh, doing public service for the city of Ox Oxnard has been to um, increase civic engagement. And uh, part of that is public noticing of, um, you know, items, agenda items on the planning commission docket. So when I read that the applicant mailed out 2008 uh, agenda notice, agenda notices to residents of the uh, El Rio West and River Park neighborhoods, I mean, that is, that is going above and beyond um, my expecta expectations. And when they also uh, included the El Rio neighborhood with, um, Additional noticing when they when they found out that, that they had not included them and in, included them in the original mailing that is uh, that that is really quite something and I'm I'm very pleased with the uh, applicant uh, team for doing that. Um, the other my other comment would be to the pastor's wife that every one of us, every single one of the planning commissioners is deeply concerned about addiction and exposure of our um, youth and sensitive populations to um, not only cannabis dis dispensaries, but um, uh, alcohol, alcohol establishments that deal in alcohol and, 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 and anything that might have a deleterious impact on, um, on people that we want to try to shield. So it may not seem like that, but I know what's in our hearts and, um, and, and we are deeply concerned uh, with that. So having said that, I, I can certainly support um, staff's recommendation. Thank, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Nash. Commissioner Dr. Lopez. A couple comments uh, and some are repetitive uh, that I've made towards other applicants. But first of all, uh, you know, I have to echo Commissioner Connolly's comments just in terms of the applicant's uh, presentation uh, and her remarks around that presentation. I really particularly appreciated uh, seeing the local involvement that you all have had thus far, uh, not only in partnering with well-established organizations, community-based organizations, but just also some of the more uh, organic grassroots, uh, you know, uh, efforts like feeding uh, essential workers and whatnot. Um, I think one of the things that stood out for me, and I know that it, that it will be, a, you know, a, a topic for continued uh, conversations once you all begin to to hire and staff up. But you know, the fifty percent uh, health coverage for me, I think, you know, is is one thing that I would like to see maybe go a little bit further. Uh, you know, just because you know it is an important uh, thing for for any human being. Um, and so, you know, given uh, the revenue that that will be expected, not only for your business 
business, but for uh, all the other cannabis companies, uh, it would be great to just see that uh, increase a little bit more to, to you know, invest in, in your staff, in their health and in their wellness and well-being. Uh, I also really particularly appreciate seeing the 2% community impact fund that you will be uh, establishing. Uh, and I think, as I've said before to some of the other applicants we've, we've seen thus far is that, uh, you know, we, we've been very deliberate and di diligent, I should say, uh, but more so deliberate uh, with uh, developing uh, our ordinance here in the city and then obviously uh, the application process and, and you know, up to the point of, of presentation before uh, the planning commission. Uh, and as I've said to others, you know, none of us would be the, the uh, advocates or champions for our community or the city of Oxnard if we didn't, uh, you know, not only wish you well, uh, because, you know, your success is our success, but also, you know, just uh, encourage you to continue to be uh, as, as generous and as philanthropic uh, as, as uh, you are inspired uh, to be. Uh, along the same lines with saying that we've been very deliberate uh, is also, you know, just our, uh, you know, our, desire, uh, you know, maybe expectation might be might be a little bit too much of a word, but, you know, our desire for our all of our can, cannabis applicants and companies to, to take pride and to consider making their stores here in Oxnard their flagship stores, um, you know, so that they are, uh, you know, not only model towards their and reflective of their companies, but, you know, uh, you know, what what any flagship store of any business uh, should be. Uh, and so once again, I just hope that, uh, you know, you have a remarkable uh, success. And as I said, your success is our community success. Uh, and I hope that you uh, are continue to be inspired to be uh, as generous and philanthropic uh, in the years ahead. So I also have no reservations and I'm prepared to, to support this application. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comments, uh, Commissioner Dr. Lopez. Commissioner Sanchez. Thank you, Chair Chavez. Just, uh, <clears throat> just a few comments having to do with, uh, with the presentation and what have you. Uh, obviously, we appreciate uh, when someone is prepared and the team is prepared to, uh, to do a presentation, let us know as much about who you are. Uh, that's, that's always key. And, uh, and uh, just uh, uh, most of us, um, you know, are looking for, uh, you know, the prep preparation and what have you. And um, to me, what I see is that, uh, you know, a, lo a lot of these establishments um, will probably be a shot in the arm for, for our town, you know, for the economy of, of Oxnard. And that's one of the things that's uh, very, very important. Um, thank you for, um, you know, doing an application uh, for franchise here because, uh, you know, uh, your presentation sort of gives me the idea that uh, you're going to be very successful and uh, we'll be able to uh, share with your, uh, with, uh, your success as well. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Nash. Commissioner Meyer. Thank you, Chair, for my, my second comment. Uh, I was uh, neglecting to uh, commend the uh, focus on bilingual staff and having a bilingual staff person on, on staff at, at all business times. Um, that's not something that I'd heard from the previous applicants. So I don't know if it was something that um, was assumed in some cases or just was not thought of, but I think that's an incredibly important piece in, um, in a city with a very large um, Spanish speaking population. Um, myself knowing that working at CDR in the Head Start program, mo the vast majority of the staff that I work with are bilingual and that confers a huge advantage for them. And uh, I know I feel inadequate oftentimes because my Spanish is, is moderate really at best, um, but it's, it's, an, it's incredibly important to the families and um, the people that, that we serve and whether it's restaurants, um, a variety of other businesses that serve the public. It's, it's, a, it's a critical piece. And uh, I think the citizens 
of Oxnard, the um, residents of El Rio uh, really deserve nothing less than that kind of level of service and uh, um, consideration. So thank you for that. Thank you, Commissioner Meyer. Any additional comments? I'll just provide my comments. Um, echoing a few of the comments that were made by the other commissioners, um, you know, in regards to Commissioner Dr. Lopez accommodating in regards to the 2%, I think that's um, amazing to go above what the city is asking for. And then your initial investment of the 250,000 is also um, commendable as well. Um, it's also commendable to hear that one of the top leadership people are, is planning on relocating um, to the city of Oxnard. So they, they, we will have somebody of the leadership team um, right here local with that business, as opposed to just saying, here's our business, but we're going to be somewhere else. Um, so it's uh, beneficial to have that. Um, in regards to um, the healthcare component, of course, um, I would as Dr. Um, Lopez, Commissioner Dr. Lopez mentioned, um, improvements to that. Um, according to your, your PowerPoint presentation, it's only um, your pay rate for your employees is only $3 above the state minimum wage. State minimum wage is $15, so your employees are only at $18. And what we're seeing now is that $15 isn't even good enough um, very much right now for multiple people across the state. Um, and I also want to commend you on your outreach efforts, as it was mentioned by Commissioner Nash, that you went above and beyond what was requested of you, and not only to the, the, the neighborhoods within the city of Oxnard, but even to the county um, in the neighborhood of El Rio, um, that is county area, um, just so that they were aware of what was coming into the area. So that's commendable. Um, as I mentioned during our last week's meeting, um, that as commissioners, we make decisions um, based off of state and city code um, and feelings isn't part of that. Um, because the reality is, I don't feel comfortable with another cannabis being so close to each other on Vineyard Avenue. That concerns me because I do not want another green mile that is in poor me. But based off of the facts that were presented to me um, from staff, from the applicant, from public testimony, there is no reason to deny this application. Um, and, you know, as the other commissioners, you know, I wish you nothing but the success and that you continue to reach out to the community and the businesses to build strong relationships through your years of being part of the city of Oxnard and that you continue to educate people because there is a lot of misinformation out there surrounding cannabis. And it's important to try to educate people and so that they are aware that there are benefits to it. Um, that concludes my comments. I look to the commission for a motion on this item. Commissioner Connolly. I'll move to approve. Uh per staff's recommendation. Do I need to read the whole thing? I'll read it, that's fine. Thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Dr. Lopez. I will second, thank you. Thank you, it's been moved and second to approve uh, staff's recommendation for Yuma Way, California LLC, doing business as relief on Vine commercial cannabis business retail special use permit, planning and zoning permit number 21-516-08, retail um, to find the project categorically exempt from environmental review pursuant to California Environmental Quality Act guidelines section 15301 existing facilities and adopt a resolution 2021 XX approving planning and zoning permit number 21-516-08 special use permit cannabis retail subject to certain findings and conditions. Is there any deliberation on that motion? Seeing and hearing none. Madam Secretary, if we can have the roll call, please. Commissioner Connolly? Yes. Commissioner Lopez? Yes. Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Commissioner Nash? Aye. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Chair Chavez? Aye. Motion passes. Congratulations.
Thank you and congratulations. Congratulations. Um, we'll go ahead and move on to our next item. Um, F3, project name EEL, Oxnard LLC, doing business as Catalyst Oxnard Commercial Cannabis Business Retail Special Use Permit, Planning and Zoning Permit number 21-516-30. A request to permit the operation of a commercial cannabis retail facility within an existing 1,465 square foot commercial suite of a 53,990 square foot multi-tenant commercial building on a 5.26 acre site located at 4749 South Savior, South Rose Avenue, apologize, um, within the general commercial plan and development zone. Proposed development includes tenant improvements, installation of an interior wall, partitioning, um, plumbing upgrades, upgrades to the existing fire alarm system, security upgrades to the existing building, and installation of a new secure doors and windows. Cannabis retail operations will be conducted between the hours of 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily. This is filed by Blake Hogan. Uh, our city staff person is Jose Coyle. Um, the recommendation is to find the project to be categorically exempt from environmental review pursuant to CEQA guidelines section 15301 existing facilities and adopt the resolution 2021 XX approving planning and zoning permit number 21-516-30 special use permit cannabis retail subject to certain findings and conditions. Uh, we will go to staff um, if they have any additional comments um, to provide. And Chair Chavez and members of the Planning Commission, uh, we only have one brief one to share with you. Uh, we did receive a communication as well for this item, and we will be posting this one on our website afterwards. This is another brief one, and I'm just going to read it into the record for all of you. So we received an email from Larita Montgomery, and it says, uh, my standard question to all parties is, will the sales dollars remain in Oxnard? Will they hire from within the city of Oxnard? What will the pay scale be? starting pay at $15 and up per hour, not located near schools or churches, adequate parking, especially necessary for special days known to bring additional customers. And that's the end of the email um, that we received. If anyone needs us to uh, reread that as we go through, let us know. Um, and with that, we don't have any additional questions and we will turn it over to the applicant for their presentation if the Planning Commission doesn't have anything for us. Thank you, Mr. Kolwitz. Um, we'll go ahead and go to our applicant team. Um, as staff is bringing up your presentation, please introduce all the members that are joining you this evening. Hi, good evening. Uh, Violeta Aguilar-Wyrick, uh, Chief Equity and External Affairs Officer for Catalyst. And I'm Blake Hogan, uh, the Project Manager uh, for EL Oxnard, uh, Catalyst Oxnard LLC. So we are Catalyst, we, we for the people. Um, next slide, please. Um, next slide. And um, our mission is, um, we are, our philosophy, our hashtag is we for the people. And what we really are trying to do with, with that philosophy is um, to bring that beyond our source and our surrounding communities, our core values really drive the direction that we bring um, into all of our source, into all of the communities, equity, accessibility in the cannabis industry, and really thinking about the industry, not just that, you know, we wanna open up and, and sell a bunch of weed, but really about how we are intentionally creating relationships with our community, um, particularly those most impacted by the war on drugs and criminalization of cannabis, and how we can use um, this, um, this very, um, this growing industry as an economic development and workforce development tool for all of our communities uh, to be uplifted. Next slide, please. So we currently, we are based out of Long Beach, California. We do have four stores in um, the Long Beach area. We have one in Santa Ana, in Bellflower. We have our micro, so that's where we have our retail uh, distribution and manufacturing. Um, we just opened up our first social equity store in the community of South LA. And um, we just opened in Monte, and in the next few weeks, we're gonna be opening up Pomona. So we are growing very rapidly throughout Southern, um, not just throughout Southern California, but expanding into, um, into Ventura County, um, Imperial Valley and beyond. Next slide, please. 
So I'll take over. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, our consumer protection because obviously that's a very important part of uh, making sure that we ensure safety for the community. So any uh, customer or patient that comes in, they signed uh, uh, basically, uh, we call it the 20 commandments because 10 was not enough, we felt. Uh, and in those 20 commandments, basically, we basically tell everyone entering our facility, they sign an agreement saying that they're going to adhere to all local and state uh, you know, laws, regulations, as well as also just being a good, uh, you know, make sure they're not loitering, make sure no consumption is happening on site, really making sure that they understand that, you know, that they are being part of the community and make sure to adhere all laws and make sure, you know, to be a, a big, uh, good community partner. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so another important part is obviously safety, we know is a huge concern. Uh, so, you know, we made sure that uh, Violetta is on the call. She will always be available for any uh, calls or questions that the community may have. Uh, we also made sure to have a safety consultant to make sure, you know, we adhere to all guidelines when it comes to fire and safety protocols, because we know that's very important. Next slide, please. Uh, as you can see, we have, uh, you know, there's site access, emergency reporting, emergency drills that we run uh, with our staff to make sure that uh, this is not just for fire and safety, but also for active shooter drills, God forbid, but you know, you have to be prepared for that, as well as, um, you know, prepared for anything that might uh, come up. Um, uh, next slide, please. Uh, so obviously another important part of things is mitigating a lot of things that might and issues that might come up. So there's security mitigation. We have on-site security uh, to make sure to not only be there on staff, but they also do roaming around to make sure that no one's loitering or no one's consuming in or around uh, the area. Uh, we also make sure that we have, uh, when we are closed, we actually have a 24-hour uh, monitoring service. So if anyone comes and tries to approach the building, we make sure to call. And if anything escalates, we make sure to instantly uh, reach out to the City of Oxnard Police. Uh, we also take our waste mitigation very seriously uh, so that, you know, anything that is deemed waste, we make sure is unrecognizable and usable. Uh, light mitigation. So obviously we don't want it to be blasting up because we don't want to uh, bother any neighbors, but at the same time, uh, we actually talked to Scott Swenson. We're actually going to increase the lighting outside, uh, directly outside of the store uh, to make sure that it's a safe area when it comes uh, during night. Uh, noise mitigation uh, shouldn't be any uh, noisier than any other uh, regular retail facility. Uh, we're also located in a huge parking uh, lot so there shouldn't be really any issues when it comes to uh, vehicle or pedestrians uh, you know in terms of you know having too much traffic and uh, those issues next slide please uh, i just want to really want to reiterate because i know parking is very uh you know big part of this so there's over 200 spaces in the area uh, we have dedicated spots for ada that are right there i uh, will also be installing a biking rack as well to you know uh, propose that, but uh, during any things for employees, anything uh, dealing with uh, large days such as 420, uh, we don't uh, see that being a problem, even though we do have uh, obviously businesses in there, uh, we don't think that uh, there'll be any issues when it comes to parking practices uh, for this facility. Uh, next slide, please. So I'll let Violetta take over this. Oh, you're on mute, Violetta. <laughs> Uh, the Zoom is, um, so um, when it comes to labor and employment practices, we are a proud union employer. We have a collective bargaining agreement with um, USCW Local 324. Um, we just expanded into Local 770's um, um, territory as we opened our, our store in South LA. So we currently already have uh, not just LPAs, but um, collective bargaining agreement with accretion language. So as we're going into these new locations, we are um, obviously the employees um, as they get, when they get hired, you know, they do vote, um, they do have the option, but that is one of the draws uh, of our company um, that we have people coming in from other um, dispensaries from both from the traditional and the legal market. They wanna come work for us because they know that we are a very good union employer. Um, we are deeply committed to this partnership. So when it comes to the wages, we are as of January, 2022, which is um, we're expecting to be opening up. Um, the starting wage under our collective bargaining agreement is $17 an hour with 50 cent increases that happen every six months. So after six months of hire, they get a 50 cent increase after six months. So um, so they are able to grow into, into uh, our company very quickly. In addition to that, we are also on a participating employer for the United uh, food and Commercial Workers National Health and Pension and Welfare Fund for Health and Welfare Benefits. 
I am one of the trustees, um, so I, I do sit in on that board. Um, and I am, um, it's something that is very important to us as an employer to make sure that cannabis uh, workers have the type of benefits that, that we see in other industries. So um, because of our commitment to that, I do serve, I am one of the employer trustees, the only um, cannabis uh, trustee in the nation um, that sits at that board. So um, in addition to that, we do um, participate in the UFCW 401k plan and, uh, and trust. For, and so any employee that opens a Roth IRA, uh, we match up to $250 per year. Our employees get paid six holidays every year, five vacation days after one year, eight vacations days after two years, and 10 days after three years. So we do make sure that um, there's benefits. Obviously, there's um, there, that there's vacations, that there's, um, there's, there's holidays. And our global CBA, um, which again, it, it, it does include a Christian language, it is, our, um, it is the best in the industry and we continue to, um, and, we, and we are, are are very excited to be bringing in uh, very good union jobs into the into the region. Um, next slide, please. I think that's the. Uh, actually, um, yes. Yeah. So um, I'm also going to talk about a little bit about the local hiring. Uh, so we um, we are committed to an application. We set 50%. Obviously, that is the bare minimum. As we have been opening the stores in the last you know couple of, the last couple of stores that we have opened up again because we are a good union employer because of all our Catalyst Cares Initiative, which is our community outreach um, um, arm of, of of our company. Um, we have what we have seen is that our local hire is right around 80% to 90%. So our role is always to hire from within the community. Um, we have been very successful to working in partnership with our with our union, um, with uh, UFCW, with the Central Labor Councils, um, and other community organizations, and being able to do local hire. One of the things that we always do is, in addition, is we create a, we, different programs. Um, we have an expungement clinic that we have hosted in the different locations. So we, that has been a draw for us to be able to pipeline people into our job fairs um, that we do um, locally. So of course, our plan is to continue to do that as we um, open up in the city of Oxnard. Um, and then, um, of course, you know, through Catalyst Scares, we have been actively involved in the community of Oxnard. We, um, one of the things that, you know, we, we did just, you know, we, we survey, um, we sent out notices to all of the neighbors um, as we were going through the application process. We also went door to door um, to all uh, of our neighbors um, and we actually surveyed them to figure out what it was that they wanted to see in their community. What was it that they liked about the city and, and what was it that they feel like that was missing? So we actually received 212 responses out of that um, community engagement survey. And as a result of that survey, we partner up with um, Lucha um, and Lucha Corazón Barrio and Ingla Ketch, and we've been working together uh, very closely with them in different efforts, such as, um, such as a little free, uh, free little library, um, the scholarship, um, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, for us, um, going into the community, working with the community is, is very important, and which is, and that commitment shows through, again, our Catalyst Cares. Next slide, please. So for us, community first. So we believe our community should be our main priority wherever we go. Um, we are very intentional in how we also create these partnerships to make sure that our employees always have an opportunity to volunteer. These are their communities. So we and we create these strong partnerships with different organizations, um, not just um, statewide, but also most importantly locally. Um, again, we have been working. Um, one of the first things that we did as we were creating this this new program was partnering with the Central Coast Labor Council. Um, food drive. Um, as COVID-19 happened, that they were one of the our very, very first partners. Um, we were volunteering um, constantly to, to provide food in the, in the city of Oxnard. Also, we um, we partner with the Holiday, holiday Toy Drive, Cops for Tots um, in La Ketch. Again, this is something that is embedded into what we do as a company. Um, we, our commitment is that our employees and ourselves, um, including myself, our CEO also goes all over. Um, you will see him this Saturday, actually, we're going to be doing a street cleanup in the in South LA, um, because this is something that is very important to us to make sure that we are good neighbors, that we are good partners. Um, we are um, as community liaison. I'm also going to be 
we're also going to be setting up a 24 hour hotline. We have, um, we will be hosting quarterly open houses. So we want to make sure that we are readily available for our neighbors, for the community, for the businesses. Um, I will be also establishing an advisory board. So this is um, really our, our, our own opportunity for us to um, have open com conversation with the city, with um, public safety, um, to really understand and for, for there, there's a dialogue to really understand more uh, what the community needs, what the community would like to see, and then for, for the community to understand um, the industry and the ways that we can really be partners. Um, and then, um, and then, of course, uh, education, education, and making sure that we are that all of our facilities uh, that there's no um, that we are not, you know, we're not. We're, there's no children, that there's nothing on displays, that we make sure that there's like education programs to that that uh, on 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 cannabis in general. Um, and when it comes to social equity, so we have committed to 2% uh, of gross receipts from our operation uh, to assist local nonprofits as well. We are also um, going to be contributing to the city's cannabis community reinvestment fund. Um, and one of the, another thing that's very, uh, that we all have also committed is at developing and implementing a social equity incubator program. Uh, one of, we have already done that successfully in the city of Long Beach. We have continued to work to uh, with, with uh, social equity um, applicants and other um, uh, advocates to really make sure that the industry and as operators that we are always aware and that we always try to include it and that we are always trying to ensure that we're creating those pipelines so that people can come into the industry. Um, next slide, please. So um, our five, um, just kind of like um, circling back to what I've been saying, our, our five core values are labor. Um, you know, we are very proud of our global collective bargaining agreement, community, that intentional outreach that um, to uplift communities, social justice. We, again, we do the record clearing events, um, social equity, uh, making sure that when you go into one on any of our stores, um, what you see is our community being reflected. And as we're growing as a company, we are seeing how, but tenders have, con have continued to grow into the different stages of our business from marketing to um, operations to management even into our our my our, my department you know like which is the community policy side of it um we've we we try to promote from within we are very intentional about the type of trainings that we do these trainings are also in partnership with the union we have uh, we have been we are going to be participating in their national joint apprenticeship and training committee. We actually have one of our staff in Vegas right now. They're going to be uh, they're they there's the first in person meeting where they're going to be working on curriculum that's going to be implemented throughout our stores. Um, next slide, please. And when it comes to the neighborhood, just making sure that, again, that, that open communication. So we know um, that the way that cannabis can really be a, a, a catalyst for workforce and economic development. Next slide, please. So um, one of the, in, in our downtown Long Beach store, so what we did is we partnered with the neighbors, with the, the um, downtown Long Beach Pine Avenue in this particular area where we were located. It was pretty much through COVID-19, a number of businesses shut down. Um, we were, um, there was really no foot traffic. The businesses were really struggling. So we, we, we got together with the neighbors, with the community, and basically we, we, we started at the, what became a block, it's now a block party that happens on a monthly basis. We um, beautify the entire um, and landscape the front. Um, and really, you know, we, this is an example of how a, a cannabis store can really can become the, the tenant, the, the, the anchor that's gonna create the foot traffic, that's gonna create the economic development, that's gonna create the, the real partnership um, with, um, with the neighbors, with the city council. We have Councilwoman Mary Sendejas. Um, we hosted a job fair where we had hundreds uh, of people coming down um, and, and it became a block, true block community um, effort. So um, we're looking forward to continue to do this work. Um, we have been um, in conversations with different organizations like the, uh, such as the Oxnard Downtown Neighborhood Partnership, um, the, um, um, uh, by, uh, I'm sorry, Southwind um, neighborhood. I have already given a presentation and and um, with them. So um, it is very important for us that that we continue to have these conversations and that we become the valuable community champions. Next slide, please. 
Um, so these are just some of our community partners that we have statewide. Um, again, um, locally, we, we do work uh, very closely with, um, with community organizations uh, that I've already mentioned. I'm not going to repeat again, <laughs> but um, next slide, please. But I am more than happy to answer any questions, and, um, and I, I look forward to meeting you all in person if I haven't already done that. Thank you for the presentation. Um, we'll go to our commissioners if they have any questions for either staff or the applicant team at this time. Commissioner Connolly. I have a twofold question. Um, the first part is to Mr. Swenson. Just for clarification, anyone employed um, by a cannabis operation or on a, on a cannabis company's um, payroll does have to be over 21, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. And then, so the second part is uh, to the applicant. So I know that you brought up um, the federal poverty, poverty level and then um, having a $17 an hour minimum wage. Do we consider like a, a bud tender or whatever your entry level position to be truly like an entry level position or is it more of a skilled position? So do you wanna take that, Bela? I can take it. Okay, sure. Go ahead. Okay. Um, yes, bud tender, we do consider a certain level of, uh, it's not necessarily, definitely not entry level. There is a certain level of skill because we do want to make sure that they're very knowledgeable in the product. Obviously, this is a product that a lot of people are, as we we as it was discussed earlier, is a product not a lot of people know about. And there's obviously variations of it now. There's flour, there's concentrates, there's edibles, there's topicals. So we definitely want people to have a, a certain level of uh, knowledge about it. Now, whether it's you know, from actually studying it or whether it's from use, we just want them to have a certain level. We do have plenty of entry levels. There is, a, uh, we do have receptionists. The receptionist definitely is more entry level. We actually uh, pay them uh, at a higher rate um, than the than the butt tender. Uh, but we also, but uh, to uh, Violetta's point, we do obviously do do training. So there's social equity hires. So people that might not have that experience, but in a different field or a different thing, we definitely want to empower them, especially the local community. Um, but there is a certain level of skill set that we we look for, but we definitely encourage uh, to help people that might just want to break in. They're excited. They're interested in that I idea of a social equity applicant, uh, transient workers, things like that. We definitely look to hire as well. Um, but it, I would say there is a certain level of skill set that we do look for. Thank you. That's where I was getting at. I just want to I just wanted to clarify yeah. just something real quickly, um, because then why, you know, so we do actually pay, I believe it's two dollars more for receptionists. Um, and the reason why is because they do not. And even though like reception is technically more entry level. So the butt tenders uh, have uh, is $17 an hour plus tips. So on those tips, um, you know, there's a significant increase. So, so the $17 an hour, that's sort of like the minimum um, that is under the collective bargaining agreement, but they do get, you know, um, so they do have tips. Um, and then and that's why the receptionist, even though it's more of an entry level, because, you know, they, they are, you know, they're the intake, um, they, they do receive an additional $2. So like our entry level pay, then it, you would say it's $19. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that's where I was getting at is that um, obviously everyone has to be over 21 years old. Um, and I, I do agree that it's a skilled, um, it's a skilled position and just bringing up in your presentation, the, the federal property level, as you know, in Long Beach, and then in the, in the city of Oxnard, it's a little bit more expensive than other parts of the country. So that's what, that's what flagged it for me. So thank you so much for answering that. Thank you, Commissioner Connolly for your questions. Commissioner Dr. Lopez. Also, I have two questions uh, on the presentation for the applicant. Uh, I believe it was your slide that covered labor and, and employment. Generally, there was a comment that you made that I uh, wasn't able to uh, catch uh, clearly because of my connection. But you mentioned something about a matching contribution for the uh, individual uh, retirement accounts. Uh, and I didn't quite catch what that uh, limit was there. Under the CBA is $250 per year. For the year. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Thank you. And then a question for Mr. Swenson. Is he still with us? Um, you know, I, it's uh, inspired by uh, a question uh, Chair Chavez asked for one of the previous applicants, but did you also have an opportunity to look at the crime or the criminal element uh, for that location uh, there? Yeah, using the 2020 stats, the crime for within a thousand feet of this site 
was 71 incidents uh, in that year. The citywide average is uh, 41.3. However, much must comment that uh, the commercial average on commercially zoned properties is 137. So this is significantly under what is normal on a commercially zoned property. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And those are all the questions I have for now. Appreciate it. Thank you, Commissioner Dr. Lopez. Commissioner Sanchez. Thank you, uh, Chair Chavez. Um, just um, just a couple of questions having to do with uh, how many how many employers will you have once you're fully uh, open? Uh, so typically, when we start, when we first open, we have about uh, I would say about fifteen uh, employees, and then once things start rolling, we'll probably have upwards of about twenty five employees once once the business picks up over over the course of about say about six months. Okay. And and so what, um, I know you, you said it, but what, what is what is going to be the average wage for most most workers there? Uh, so the wage uh, for starting a uh, bartender is seventeen dollars, and then for a receptionist is nineteen, and then it's and then Viola, do you have the for management? I know that there was a recent update in the CBA agreement, but I, I want to make sure I give the correct numbers in terms of for the assistant managers and managers, or is that, did anything get updated or is it still the same? I don't have a, I have the, the, the CBA, so mm. I don't have the most updated one, but we can definitely send you the, um, get you that information. Um, yeah, yeah, just no, want to make sure we, the, I just want to make sure I give you the correct because we're, we're recent, very recently updated. So I just want to make sure that. Well, that's okay. You, you, you gave us a lot of, information which we appreciate you know uh with your application and what have you so I, we i did all of us we we reviewed every everything that you submitted so we appreciate that um i'm just looking at the the your business being an economic engine in south oxnard you know because uh there's um you know uh, the most prosperous part of oxnard is the north side and in the south, you know, historically not as much, but uh, this 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 type of a business can be something that can re revitalize, energize South Oxnard, especially in your in in, in the part of South Oxnard that it's in. Um, just just one other question. Um, so um, as far as uh, excuse me. Um, so so as far as, so, uh, so uh, I'm sorry, um, lost my train of thought. So, oh, okay. Uh, just, just one question having to do with, um, with uh, is um, so you you'll be moving into that shop, shop, shopping center, and that's the one that has has the market, correct? Uh, the the Island Pacific, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, so um, you know. My wife and I we're we're familiar with it because we do shopping over there at Island Pacific because they have Asian foods and fish, real good fresh fish and what have you. So you know we're sort of familiar with it. Uh, one of the things that uh, we've I've always uh, noticed is that uh, Commissioner Sanchez. Yes. I apologize, but this is only a, a portion for questions. Um, you could save those comments for the deliberation part. Um, I did allow some leeway, but um, if you can just keep it to questions, that would be okay. It. Just one question: um, Will there be renovations in uh, when they move in, uh, especially with the uh, asphalt, because there's a lot of potholes? Will that be uh, rectified once uh, they move in? That, that's my question. Is that a question? Sorry for uh, for us or for yeah. Well, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I was just trying to make sure. Um, well, um, hopefully they 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 clean up the hop uh, the pot holes and what have you if they're still there because uh, you know obviously now that you're moving in they should improve those sort of things. 
Yeah, we have talked about the the with staff about um, upgrades to the parking area. Uh, not necessarily sure about the entire. Obviously, it's a very very large parking lot, but definitely in the uh, you know main area where we'll be residing, uh, they'll definitely be uh, you know restriping like I talked about um, improved lighting, and then if there is any uh, in terms of issues with uh, you know that parking lot area, we'll definitely um, note that and make make improvements. Thank you. Thank you for your questions, Commissioner Sanchez. Any additional questions from the commission? Um, I just had a, a few questions. Um, I know you, uh, for the applicant team, I know you mentioned in your presentation $17 and the reason why blood tenders were making $17 because they received tips. What is the cap? that for them to be able to get their raise increases? I know you mentioned every six months they get 50 cents, but is there a cap or they could be there for 10 years and be making $27. They could be there for 15 years and be making $32. What, what is the cap? So right now, I mean, I'm, I'm just looking at the wage scale because that goes up to 41 months. Um, so the, at, at 41 months, they, the, their salary starting at $17, um, it goes up to $20.50. So, um, and that's, you know, sort of the, because that's the lifetime of the collective bargaining agreement that we have. So, um, but generally speaking, you know, uh, and that is one of the things that right now, as we're growing very rapidly, um, we are, you know, in kind of like this overdrive to try to pipeline people into some of this management positions, because obviously we want to try to uh, promote from within. We have already created a number of other management positions as we have found that there's different jobs. So we've created, um, unionized um, assist all of our assistant managers are so uh, every single employee at the, our stores are are part of the collective bargaining agreement except for the general manager the two general managers but every, everybody else assistant managers um the leads they're all part of the they're all part of the union they're all part of the collective bargaining agreement and they're all part of the you know the, the wage scales so what ends up happening uh when once you know what it, right now what we're kind of having a challenge is that a lot of the butt tenders don't want to come into the management because they're making more money as a tender so so that is you know a, a little bit of, of and you know and obviously as they start going into salary and you know you're so it's 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 and we have a very young um generally speaking a very young workforce so so that um you know it, it has been one of the growing pains that we have seen um as as a, as a company and as we've been having to very very rapidly um you know having people move try to get people to move up and convince them that in the long term you know uh, yes they may be losing you know because they are the, our butt tenders you know we put the tips that are, are, are making um, generally speaking you know really good um, really good money um, that sometimes as we are having them you know go into more of like this backup house um, they do they think it feels like a pay cut but you know obviously as the industry is growing and as we continue to grow as a company um, into the different areas you know all all, all most of our employees in, in headquarters are um, started at the stores. Um, so, so you know, again, just this workforce development piece, making sure that we are good employers, making sure that we are creating those opportunities, and that everybody at our, you know, at, our, at all of our employees um, are are able to 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 be in an industry and be proud of the work that they're doing and having the jobs that allows them to um, to to have a good quality of life in the communities that they live. Thank you for that. Um, vacations, I, I did not catch it. When do they start occurring vacation hours? Um, was it after a year? Yeah, so obviously we comply with the um, with the law um, uh, and with the and with um, sick days and everything. But yes, after a year, it's it's a week. And then after um, two years, it's eight days. And then after that, it's 10 days. Okay. Um, the, the tips that the butt tenders get, do they have to split it out or they keep everything that they get? They keep, they keep everything they get. They keep. Okay. <laughs> um, it, it, you talk very, very fast. Um, and, and I can hear the passion behind that, but, um, can you talk a little bit about the healthcare co benefits components, um, medical, dental, vision, how much is the employee's contribution? Um, how much is the employer's contribution towards that? 
I am pulling it up right now. Okay. Um, and then while you're doing that, I guess I'll just throw this other question. You, you made a lot of comments in regards to your community involvement with um, Long Beach and the downtown area. Um, what efforts have you contributed um, here locally in the city of Oxnard, such as cleanups or anything, um, improvements? So while I'm looking for the, for the help here, oh, here it is. So um, we are part of the UFCW National Health and Welfare Fund. So we, so this is the, the we're part of, we're one of the contributing employers to the health and um, health fund. Um, so what we, so we contribute, um, uh, so we contribute as part of that. Um, $375 towards the monthly cost of um, benefits. And um, I don't have the, the total cost, but we contribute and they end up paying very little. I don't, I don't remember the full amount. Um, and one of the things that with, as we are coming into the industry and as we are, we are, I am one of the employee trustees for the National Health and Pension Fund. So we are constantly trying to negotiate and you know, we, I am the only employer trustee at this national table. So we're constantly trying to improve and making sure that our, our employees are covered with the best um, health benefits. So um, that our, our, employee, our contribution to, to all, all of our employees is $375 under a collective bargaining agreement towards medical, dental, and vision. Okay. Um, and then as far as your community involvement, um, what efforts have you taken um, since the application process started? So we, like I said, um, we have been uh, working um, last year during 2020, um, we participated uh, with the Central Coast Labor Council uh, food drives, food distribution efforts. Um, so we participated with, with them a number of times. Um, we also contributed and participated with at the holiday toy drive, Cops for Tots with the Oxnard Police Department. Um, we uh, have also uh, made, uh, uh, we are um, uh, already partnering and contributing to In La Kitch. Um, so uh, they're, they're one of our monthly recipients. So we've been working very closely with Senor, Mr. Gomez um, and his group. Um, we also did, um, we sponsored the little free little library that is currently in um, South with uh, Southwind's neighborhood. So we, um, and we also provided the scholarship for the artist. Um, we have also provided an other number of scholarships through Lucha as well. Um, we work with the, um, we contributed to Oxnard uh, neighborhood, downtown neighborhood partnership. Uh, we're hoping uh, that in the near future, we are able to do a mural or something like that with them. We work very closely together with um, Mr. Um, Garcia and, and all of his efforts um, with Lucy Cartagena. She, um, you know, we were just discussing the, the community garden that she's working on. So um, um, yeah, those are like kind of like the ones that I can remember off the top of my head. I appreciate that, thank you. Um, the next questions are gonna be for staff. Um, Mr. Swanson, um, you mentioned that um, 71 incidents above the average citywide, but they are below um, the commercial. Um, do you happen to have um, what those incidents were? Just, you know, roughly brief categories of what those incidents were at that location or within the thousand feet of that location? Yeah, it, it kind of covered the gamut of, of small crimes and small incidents. Uh, I don't recall any major uh, major crimes. There were a few thefts, and I think there were a couple domestic batteries. Okay. Which is not uncommon for, for that kind of locale. Okay. I appreciate that. Um, for our staff, um, Mr. Coyle, um, during the applicant's presentation, they talked about, and, and it was even mentioned by the applicant that they are only required a minimum of 50% of local hires. Um, it was my understanding that our city put a minimum of 75% or 70% minimum um, local hires. Can you correct me if I'm wrong? Yes. Um, so in regards to that, their conditions of approval state that they have to have 75% uh, 
um, local hires. So you are correct that the minimum standard is 75%. I'm not sure if the applicant team was not made aware of that um, or if we're confusing it with something else on their slides. I did not catch that. Um, but yes, as part of their project um, and conditions of approval, they must have 75% or more um, employees hired um, that are residents of the city of Oxnard. You know what, that is probably a typo because we've been doing this presentations multiple times, but our commitment is, like I said, and then everywhere we've been going, we have gone above the, I mean, I, we are currently in South LA and our South LA store and Almonte store at over 80, 90% local hire. So that's not a problem in terms of our commitment to ensuring that we will be hiring locally. And like I said, we have a very wide network um, of, of local um, organizations from, from labor to, you know, to, to community um, that I, I hope that we, that we would be able to tap into surpass that 75% threshold. Yeah, to speak to it real quick, the reason the 50% is that was based off of, as Violetta said, our original application. So we're more than um, willing to and, and, and probably will go above and beyond the 75%. But yeah, that was where the number came from. So apologies on that. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, actually, one more question for our applicant team. Um, it wasn't really touched on it too much in regards to the security management plan. Um, the, the security, how many guards do you plan on having at any given time? Are they going to be there 30 minutes before for employees, 30 minutes after for employees? Um, I know you said that there was remote viewing um, capabilities and if incidents escalate that they would be able to contact PD. Um, so can you just briefly touch on those um, as far as your security management plan? Yeah, of course. Uh, so we we work with a security firm, uh, Pacific uh, Security uh, Company Patrol, who ha who will get a uh, business license in the city of Oxnard, but they work at all our stores. Uh, we have one armed security guard on site at all times. Uh, they are there uh, before when employees arrive, as well as when uh, they're the last when employees leave. So there's always a security guard when any employees are on site, whether it's arriving or leaving. Uh, once they leave and lock up and everyone goes, uh, to what I talked about, it's uh, called NetWatch. It's an overnight security monitoring system uh, that takes over. Basically, cameras are installed uh, both on the back, uh, front, and sides of the building. So if anyone were to approach the building, uh, they are basically told uh, this this is being monitored. Please leave. The, please leave. If you do not leave, uh, the uh, the police will be called and that usually deters people because not only it deters them also because they specifically call people out. Uh, if you see, uh, they say a person in the, the red shirt, uh, you're here so they know that someone's monitoring them and we've noticed it's actually very successful uh, to have that uh, type of monitoring. So yeah, for physical security, we have one armed security guard on site. As I said, uh, they are making sure they're right there at the reception. Uh, anytime products come on site, they make sure to have uh, secure in the back entrance, as well as uh, doing um, intermittent uh, kind of roving in and around the area. So on busier days, uh, such as holidays or things like that, we will add an additional unarmed security guard to help mitigate um, the large crowds and, you know, if there's any issues in terms of that. I appreciate that. And that just drummed up another question for me. Mr. Swanson, I apologize for <laughs> calling you back again. Um, in regards to the security management plan of having one guard that's at the at the front um, and that is dealing with product and that potentially ends up leaving the location when they perform their patrols, is that acceptable for city code and our standards for the applicants? For the size of this facility, it is. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, I have no further questions. We'll go to Commissioner Meyer. Thank you, Chair Jarvis. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, yes, question for the applicant. Um, what is, uh, and, and I appreciate um, that you yourself represent both uh, minority and uh, female leadership. I was curious about the, the ownership um, and what percentage is minority female, um, as well as other leadership, like your leadership team in general? So our CEO um, is, his name is Elliot Lewis. So he is the majority owner of the store. I am also part owner of this store. So I am an, um, an immigrant, um, you know, and um, 
Uh, and then our other owners is um, Mr. Damon Martin. So he is our chief compliance officer. And our other owner is Dr. Greg Smith. Dr. Greg Smith is uh, one of the most prominent doctors um, in, the, in the industry working around cannabis. He's actually uh, had a number of documentaries in, uh, on Netflix talking about um, you know, discussing um, how, um, how cannabis can really help and especially transition people um, out of, you know, that have uh, been faced with um, the opioid crisis. Um, he is an African-American. He is, uh, so, so half our owners are, 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 are minority owned. And the majority, like I said, in our, in our headquarters and in our leadership team are, are women. Um, you know, we have, we have a very small but mighty team in our HQ, but we are, we're, we're women, um, you know, we, women of color and our women and that's also reflected in the rest of our management team. So um, social equity, again, is part of our core values and making sure, and even though our CEO and our main owner is not, um, but he's very much um, not just an ally, but an accomplice in helping and ensuring that we are creating a, a, a cannabis industry that is equitable and that is that, that gives opportunity for those of us, you know, and, and particularly to communities that have mostly impacted by the war on drugs. Yeah, and just to reiterate that, I also want to note that, yeah, our head of operations is also a woman of color. Our head of purchasing is a woman. Our Her co-head is also a, a woman of color. Also, we have multiple GMs who are women and women of color. So very, uh, very representative of the, the community. And then obviously our staff itself, if you go to any one of our stores, you'll see we have a very diverse staff across every, all our stores, all our platforms. So it's, 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 as Violetta said, I just want to reiterate from the top down, it, it, we, we like to make sure that there's a, a wide range of representation. Thank you very much. Any additional questions from the commission? Seeing and hearing none, we'll go ahead and open the public hearing portion for this item. Once again, this is item F3EL, Oxnard LLC, commercial cannabis um, retail. Um, our first speaker that we have is um, Chris Hernandez. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, you have three minutes. All right, good evening, commissioners. Uh, my name is Chris Hernandez. I am the vice chair of the Five Points Neighborhood Council. I'm calling in today or tonight in support of Catalyst and their establishment here in the city of Oxnard. For the last 10 months, I have been in touch with Violeta and the Catalyst team, and they have consistently been involved with the community of Oxnard and Port Wainimi. Catalyst have been supporters of many local organizations, as she's mentioned, and events such as the Southwinds Neighborhood Council, the Cops for Tots Toy Drive, Mayor Gama's uh, Port Wainimi Beach Cleanup, alongside with Councilman Bobby Martinez, they have supported local artists and read books with kids in Cuesta del Mar at my little free library project event. The Catalyst team has a great supporter, uh, support for Mr. Gomez and in La Quech Cultural Arts Center here in the Five Points neighborhood. They will be also supporting the Oxnard Peace Ride in November and I can actually personally vouch for their outreach as I have personally helped them and their team conduct surveys around the neighborhood they will be establishing in. They care about our residents, not only by supporting local events, but also care enough to supply our locals with priority employment opportunities. Opportunity to better the South Side. That's what I see here. An opportunity to make the shopping center a safer place with more lighting, security guards, and security, high quality security cameras. And, and I really trust that Catalyst will bring a betterment and life to that south side part of Oxnard. Catalyst is in tune with what's going on here locally. They are here for the betterment of our people and our economy. And Catalyst son para la gente. Catalyst is here for change, positive change. And I thank them and I thank you guys tonight for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez for your comments. We'll move to our next person, um, Magdalene Penny. Good evening, everyone. 
it's this mother again, and I'm back. I, I guess I will be here until I can't breathe because I am so concerned about not only my child, but I know many people that have been caught up in the belief of believing that they need this because of some illness that they have all of a sudden. Please believe me, I am a nurse. I am a hospice nurse. I was a hospice nurse for eight years. I used to give cannabis to my patient. I had no clue that when I was voting for cannabis that it was going to be to make people believe that they needed it for something other than the illness of having people that are on their way out. If it can stop neurology, the, the neuro in the brain, then that's what it's doing. I seen it do it to my child. He was going to school to be a PT. Double, double degrees at Oxnard College. Double degrees, and all of a sudden, he can't get past that because he has this mindset that he needs this cannabis in his life. I, I hear what you're saying. You think that this is gonna bring money to Oxnard? Oxnard was built on the faith and the belief of the people trusting in God, not in anything else. The beat factor was here. Those mission churches were here. They were the only thing that can build up Oxnard is God. And if God does not protect the city, it is not going to last. I don't care how much money that these people put into this city. I, I, I'm, I guarantee you. It's going to come to pass. And I, I have this scripture, 1 Corinthians, 3rd chapter, the 10th verse. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builder thereon. Let But let every man take heed how he build it thereupon. You're the councilman here. If you're going to take heed and think that this is going to, Build up Oxnard. 30 seconds left. Let it be known to you that when you leave here, you have left a legacy. And I hope you get to, I, I, I feel sorry for every mother who have to walk in my shoes because it's not pretty. And I hope nobody here ever have to experience what I have to experience. God have mercy on each of you who think this is okay. It is so wrong. And I hope that God will help you understand that. Thank you, Mr. Penn, for your comments. We'll go to our next speaker, Lucy Catahini. Ms. Catahini, you can press star six to unmute yourself. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, you have three minutes. Hi, my name is Lucy Cartagena. Um, that's a ha hard act to follow. But um, my name is Lucy Cartagena. I am the director of Families First. We're a nonprofit here in Oxnard. We provide um, parenting and co-parenting classes for our community for free. Um, I work alongside various other organizations. I love to collaborate and connect. Um, I have reached out to Catalyst. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting them alongside other um, cannabis organizations and businesses in Oxnard and Port Wainini. I really, really embrace the idea because I was one of the ones that used to sit on there and promote to bring in cannabis in our community. It was long overdue and long needed. As a nonprofit, we depend on organizations and businesses like that to sustain us because we cannot expect a city to provide. As a ex-homeless commissioner, we depended on the cannabis company to provide our 100 beds in downtown Oxnard, or we would not have been able to provide the shelter that we have. Now, as a American Cancer Society board, we provided, um, we provided education on what different type of um, holistic methods you can take for pain. Cannabis happens to be one. 
I am excited that this is going to be at the south end of Oxnard by our college because it means a lot of our city college residents can work there. They already work at the 99 cent store and at that other center at the wonderful fried fish market. I don't even know the name of it. I just know they got the best fish in Oxnard. I think it's a great fitting. It's a win-win for Oxnard. And I look forward to collaborating in a bigger scale as I start working in the downtown sensory garden, not just with Catalyst, but all of them, everybody, and any other business. But we're already stretched thin. So the very thought that new monies are coming in is exciting for us because we sustain on financial community involvement. So I really, really look forward. It, it appears that we've lost audio uh, with, oh. with the speaker. Uh, if we can maybe reset her time and get her uh, to uh, be able to, to include her comments again, or maybe uh, call we, in again. We can hear her just fine. We, yeah. we had her coming in okay. Audio is fine. I'm assuming it's the IT team that lost it. Wow, am I still on there or did I get kicked off? Hold on one second, Ms. Catania. We're trying to figure out what, what's uh, going on. Our staff is indicating that they weren't able to hear you. Um, Com Commissioner Chavez, if, if I could, we're, we're actually, maybe it's not Lucy's uh, phone because we're having a hard time hearing you as well. If if you could nod, if the commission was able to hear her comments, okay, that's great. Um, so sorry to interrupt. Let's go ahead and um, you know reset the clock to uh, to two minutes for um, uh, Ms. Cartagena to finish her comments, um, since all of you can hear her. And then our IT team is still working on the fee on the side. So please continue. Oh, wow. Well, thank you, you guys. I feel so privileged. Hey, <laughs> well, on that note, since I have extra time, this Saturday in downtown Oxnard on the corner of 6 and C, we will be doing a blessing day. We will be giving out free everything to the community, especially the homeless. So if you have anybody you'd like to come, bring them down Saturday from 12 or 4. But on another note, as a nonprofit, we rely on businesses like Catalyst Cares to help sustain us. We do not have other um, monies coming in from city because there is no city money. So this is why it's so important for people like me that run a nonprofit. How do we sustain the community? It has to be self-sustained. So I really, really love that you guys are moving forward and moving our generation in a bigger and better capacity for our city. So thank you very much for the opportunity and thank you very much for having the vision. Thank you very much. I'll end with that. Bye-bye. Thank you, Ms. Catahenia, for your, um, your comments. Um, staff, are you able to hear me? Uh, Chair Chavez, yes, we we're hearing you. Our volume in the chambers right now dropped about 50%. So we, we are hearing everyone again. Um, as long as you're also hearing things, that's great. So let us know if you're having any technical difficulties on this side. Our IT team is uh, actively troubleshooting on this end. Sounds good. Um, that is the last speaker on the call. So we'll go ahead once again in accordance with AB 361. Um, any additional members of the public wishing to speak on this item? This is item F3EL Oxnard LLC Commercial Cannabis Retail. It's going to be located in South Oxnard off of Rose Avenue in Pleasant Valley. Um, please email planning at oxnard.org or visit the city's website. This is a timed for three minutes. And Chair Chavez, while, while we're in this three minute period, um, we think we fixed it. If we can get one of the members of the Planning Commission to, uh, to say something into a microphone, that could allow us to know if, uh, if we're back in communication with each other clearly. Check, check, check one, two. 
Check one, two, three. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we are hearing you, although it's it's modulating. So we're we're going to keep working through this. Um, if the pandemic taught taught us anything, it's to be uh, both humble as well as uh, um, nimble. So we're going to try to do both of those things as we move forward. Commissioner and Dr. Lucas, I need you to bust a flow since you did the mic check. You got a bust a flow now. <laughs> Uh, no comment on that one, uh, but but I appreciate that. Um, uh, we'll continue to monitor the Collins uh, sheets here and, and let the commission know if anyone does sign up within this three minute period. Uh, the only thing that I'm, I'm going to chime in to uh, share with the planning commission, though, as we do move into deliberations, um, is um, an appreciation for the questions that uh, the commission is asking as a whole. Uh, trying to feel out the operational characteristics of this particular operator. Um, but we do want to remind the Planning Commission that uh, what's before us today really is a land use decision. Uh, there are a number of, of questions that went out there that start straddling the line between uh, land use and, and operation, operational characteristics and um, as we start going into uh, in employee benefits and other things that, that might go a step too far. Um, so as we go into deliberations in particular, um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll ask that we not include that as part of our discussion. So just wanted to share that with everyone as a quick reminder. Thank you, Mr. Povitz. You're welcome, and as we're going into the final 30 seconds, we'll have uh, D give the update when the clock hits zero if we have anyone else that's signed up to speak. So thank you. Jacobowitz? Yes, Commissioner uh, Nash. Um, it, uh, it's uh, Commissioner yes. Sanchez. Yes, Commissioner Sanchez. Um, just to, can you repeat what you say? Because I just uh, um, uh, came in and I missed the last part. Uh, Yes, um, I'll, I'll gladly repeat that. Let me just double check with Dee really quick to see if we had anyone sign up. Um, Chair Chavez and Planning Commissioners, we do not have anyone sign up to speak. Thank you. Okay, and Commissioners, the, the comment that I made is uh, just a quick reminder that we're here for a land use decision. Um, so we're really looking at those uh, standards that are in the code uh, for this particular use to be operating here. As we engage with special use permits, one of the things that we do look at is, well, what are the operational characters of this particular business and use, and how does that help influence us in, in determining that they're going to stand behind the softer side of planning, if you will. It's not um, to, to meet their commitment for what they are proposing to us. Um, it's a gray area, I would generally say, for, for um, the evidence that you're searching. As we step into the world of employee benefits and those type of things, that's that's maybe not necessarily uh, an operational characteristic that um, may uh, um, be part of a land use decision. So uh, you know there are aspects of the, the conversation that we we let go for for a bit, um, but maybe the most succinct way of putting it is. Financial considerations really aren't a land use matter for the planning commission. Um, it's the uh, standards which are in the code that we need to evaluate things um, uh, for this project. And if we need uh, a council to uh, give a little bit of guidance, we can also um, have them hop up here if, if there are questions about that. Um, so I just wanted to share those couple of comments with you. Thank you, Mr. Colwitz. Um, at this time, we'll go ahead and move into um, the commission's deliberation. Um, commissioners, Commissioner Dr. Lopez. I'll go ahead and get it started since it's getting a little late here. I want to thank the applicant uh, for uh, their presentation uh, and for joining us this evening. Um, you know, uh, in Spanish, there's a saying, Dime con quien andas y te dirá quien eres, uh, which translates, uh, you know, loosely to you are the company you keep. I very much appreciated uh, the folks that you mentioned that you have reached out to, you have engaged, you have supported, you have worked with uh, here, uh, especially considering that you uh, are, uh, you know, an applicant or an owner. Uh, you know, from from the 
uh, LA Long Beach, uh, South Bay area. Uh, you know, the fact that you've uh, reached out, established relationships with uh, nonprofit organizations like Lucha in La Quech, uh, who does remarkable work uh, with our children, the South Winds Neighborhood Leadership Council, the Central Coast Labor Council, and of course, uh, UFCW. Uh, like I said, uh, you certainly are the company you keep. And uh, for me, I really do appreciate, uh, you know, um, those folks uh, for the work uh, that they do uh, in our community. Um, you know, I've, I've mentioned this to some of the other applicants, uh, and I'm not sure if you're already on the line a little bit earlier, but, uh, you know, we've been very, here in the city of Loxner, we've been very deliberate about our cannabis, uh, uh, you know, uh, regulations and in and our permitting and, and getting to this point. Um, and it was, you know, because of the great care uh, that we had uh, and and concern that some folks had to to be quite honest, uh, but up to this point, uh, you know, I am happy to see that you are perhaps the first uh, applicant uh, in South Oxnard, uh, like some of the other commissioners uh, mentioned in their uh, remarks. Uh, you know, it it, it is uh, you know uh, a great consideration that you took. Uh, in identifying uh, this location uh, for your business and all that it can do to revitalize, uh, to be uh, an economic engine, as well as one of the public speakers said, perhaps, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, an employer for uh, our college students at Oxnard College, which is about a block or two uh, away from, from you all. Uh, as I said to some of the other applicants, I, I hope that you uh, take great pride in, in, in this location if approved uh, and and consider it making it, uh, you know, one of your flagship uh, stores along with uh, some of the stores in, in Long Beach, uh, Santa Ana, and some of the other, uh, I, uh, El Monte, I believe you included. Uh, as I've said to some of the other applicants, your success is our success. Uh, and I uh, wish you tremendous success. And I hope that you continue to support, uh, you know, the folks uh, and the organizations uh, who are hyper local, uh, you know, to, to the immediate neighborhoods around you, but as well as, as um, you know, others doing important work uh, across the city. Um, and so, um, you know, I have no reason to uh, to not support. And so uh, I am prepared to support uh, this application uh, when we get to that point. Thank you all. Thank you, Commissioner Dr. Lopez for your comments. Commissioner Meyer. Thank you, Chair Chavez. Uh, yes, I um, am encouraged to see that there is a an applicant that is um, putting forward a business to take uh, residence in South Oxnard. Um, that is an area that uh, as part of our city is definitely uh, challenged to um, uh, businesses and to bring jobs into the area. Um, I think it's uh, commendable that you're focused in that area and you're focused on social equity and um, you've reached out to uh, long-term community uh, members and uh, contributors like um, Mr. Gomez at Inla Ketch, uh, like Ms. Cartagena, who I've, I've worked with before as well. Um, and I think just your being in South Oxnard um, also makes it incumbent that you really become, get to know well that area um, and that area which um, has a, a high degree of poverty which also has a high degree of um, working poor and families and work that work in the fields that come um, from uh, Mexico, come from other countries um, south of the border, um, a, high, a large number of families that are um, uh, indigenous um, coming from Mexico in certain areas. So um, finding ways to reach out to those families and to make sure that they're those neighborhoods, those areas, those families, people are aware of um, what you're able to do, what you do, um, clarifying, educating, providing those job opportunities is really um, something that I'd strongly encourage uh, that you do. Looking at um, specific areas of South Oxnard that include like uh, our Ormond Beach wetlands, if you're not familiar with that area, that's an important focus for our city's revitalization. Um, so I, I, I'm definitely excited to have you in our city, in that area, um, getting to know the partners, getting to know the area. Um, Island Pacific 
market where you're located there is uh, a special place that maybe a lot of people who don't live near uh, South Oxnard or, um, or the area might not be aware of, but that looks like it could be a, a positive relationship of sharing traffic, developing uh, relationships with your, your partner businesses. Um, and looks like you'll be a positive force in terms of um, creating safety, creating uh, a new idea for a lot of people in the area, a lot of residents, what is cannabis? What are cannabis businesses? Um, and are they beneficial? Um, so the education piece and the way you guys present yourself and your business is gonna be um, really, uh, really key. Um, and uh, I like your plan. I like the fact of what you've done in other areas and uh, your work to focus on building from within. So all of those things are very encouraging. I think um, you're another example of a business that's striving to, um, to be the best to race to the top instead of racing to the bottom like so many you know, uh, businesses have historically. Um, and I think you guys will set a, a, a marker for other cannabis businesses, cannabis businesses other, can, other businesses in the greater Oxnard area. And um, definitely knowing about these things gives the customers a good sense of who they'd want to shop with. Because what do they do for the community? Where does the money go? All those things are increasingly important to conscientious shoppers and, and local people um, in our city. So thank you for your presentation. I can support this project. Thank you, Commissioner Meyer. Commissioner Connolly. I want to obviously just echo what everyone said. Um, I think the presentation was fantastic. I think um, the applicant, well, let me backtrack. I, I grew up in South Oxnard, so it has like a really big place in my heart. Um, and I love to see things coming into South Oxnard and people excited about South, South Oxnard for sure. Um, Everyone probably on this call knows exactly where it is, but it's really close um, to the PCH. It has uh, beautiful beaches and it's a great community. So I, I think with that said, you guys have your work cut out for you. Um, in the last presentation, we talked about everyone kind of being, not everyone, but a handful of the cannabis retailers being concentrated in one specific area. You guys are obviously a little bit further from that. Um, and I think that's good. And, and I'm just excited for you guys. And I just wanted to say thank you. So, and best of luck. Thank you, Commissioner Connolly. Any additional comments from the commission? I'll just provide a few comments. Um, um, as I mentioned during, at the beginning of our meeting during our ex parte, um, I, I did site visits of, the of a few of the locations on tonight's agenda. And this was one of those site locations. Like Commissioner Connolly, and I believe also um, Commissioner Dr. Lopez, um, grew up in South Oxnard. Um, I still live in South Oxnard. Even though there's a debate of where the line for South Oxnard is, it's Woolly Road, okay? I'm putting that out there. Um, this area is not foreign to me. I have family that live into the area, so um, I am in this area quite a bit. Um, one of the biggest things for me is trying to raise South Oxnard. But there are a few concerns that I have with this particular location. So as I mentioned, I did site visits. I actually visited this site three times this week um, during peak hours and then off peak hours. For about an hour, two hours, I sat there and I was watching what was occurring on that site. There is a lot of loitering, which concerns me when I hear the security plan only has one security guard. And that security guard is inside next to the receptionist. And that once he goes on patrol, now there's nobody watching the shop. It concerns me, again, um, to hear the 71 incidents, although minor um, compared to the city average and below what commercial is, um, that's still very concerning. It also concerns me of other safety components of the property that's outside of your realm as a business owner, but they're still there. 
And anybody who knows, crime doesn't stay in one place. Um, I want to commend you for your efforts of reaching out to the public, getting in contact with many of uh, the speakers, um, you know, uh, Chris Hernandez and Lucy Cartagena, who are our community leaders, um, uh, Mr. Gomez, um, who does tremendous work with our youth. Um, but I do have um, very serious concerns with this project at this location. Um, and that will include my comments. And I look to the commission for a motion on this item. Commissioner Meyer. Thank you, Chair Chavez. I uh, the staff's recommendation on this project. Okay, Commissioner Dr. Lopez. I'll second, thank you. Okay, it's been moved and second so for the project EEL, Oxnard LLC doing business as Catalyst Oxnard commercial cannabis business retail special use permit, planning and zoning permit number 21-516-30. Um, find the project to be categorically exempt from environmental review. Pursuant to the California Environmental Quality Act guidelines, section 15301, existing facilities and adopt a resolution 2021 double X approving planning and zoning permit number 21-516-30, special use permit, cannabis retail subject to certain findings and conditions. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing and hearing none, Madam Secretary, if we can have the roll call, please. Staff, are you still there? We will give it a moment to find out what's going on with staff. Okay. Well, it's still very loud. Okay. Chair Chavez, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Commissioner Lopez? Yes. Commissioner Connolly? Yes. Commissioner Nash? Aye. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Chair Chavez? No. Motion passes. Thank you for that. Um, we will proceed to our next item. Um, I'm just going to read the, the name into the record. Um, this is uh, the Vineyard Starbucks site renovations, planning and zoning permit number 21-550-01. Um, we'll go to our staff um, for the announcement um, that was made at the top of the meeting either Mr. Powitz or Mr. Pearson. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, I'm not sure if Scott's gonna jump in here, um, but as Scott mentioned at the top of the meeting, the applicant has requested that we continue this item to the November 4th meeting. So that's um, staff's recommendation is that the commission continue it to the November 4th um, meeting. Thank you, Mr. Pearson. Um, Mr. Earley, um, I don't know if you're in the chambers or just online. Um, yes, I'm here. Oh, thank you. Um, since it was already noticed, um, is it appropriate to open the public hearing and then um, move to a motion from the commissioners to continue the item? I would suggest uh, taking just public comment on the agenda item if there is any, because it is agendized as an I as a as an item. However, um, you can don't have to open the public hearing at all. You can wait until the next meeting. You're just going to continue it to a date certain. 
Okay. Um, so we'll go ahead and um, take public comments on this item. Um, I don't know if the Chambers is hearing us. Um, I, I don't have anyone listed. Um, and I'm assuming we still have to follow AB 361, correct, Mr. Early? Yeah, yes, we should still provide that three minutes and, and see what happens. Um, if, if we're still continuing to have technical difficulties, it's um, probably a moot point anyway, since we're simply continuing this item anyway, which would be the result if we had to shut down the meeting because of uh, the technical purposes. So I would okay. give it three minutes and let's see what happens. Okay, so we'll go ahead and um, in accordance with AB 361, do the three minute pause. Um, again, any members of the public that wish to speak on this item, this is item for F4 with the Starbucks renovation that's gonna be located off of Vineyard. Um, this item is scheduled to be continued to our next meeting, which is November 4th, at the request of the applicant. Members of the public can email planning at oxnard.org or visit the city's website to fill out the speaker form. Again, this is time for three minutes. Chair, the good news is that it appears that the council chambers can hear us um, because they started the clock and it's running visually. So um, we might not be able to hear them, but they can hear us. So we seem to be still in good shape to proceed as long as uh, the public can hear us still. Sounds good. And it sounds like you're in charge then, Mr. Early. Ah. And Chair Chavez and members of the commission, uh, city staff can still hear you very faintly in the chambers, but we have confirmed that the broadcast is still going out uh, appropriately on our various uh, mediums. So in that sense, we're, we're good. Um, uh, thank you for uh, both uh, Joe Pearson and Paul Earleaf to chime in for us uh, as they're able to uh, interact with you a lot easier uh, just with the audio uh, difficulties we're, we're working with here. Uh, we're gonna still try to uh, work our way through it here and participate all the way through the end of this meeting. So thank you. And in the meantime, we are monitoring the uh, sign up here uh, electronically. Uh, when the clock hits zero, we'll let you know if anyone else um, or if anyone has signed up to speak on this particular item. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kowitz. Um, Chair Chavez and commissioners, I haven't received any public speakers for this item. Thank you, Madam Secretary, for that. Um, commissioners, if, uh, a motion has been recommended by staff to continue this item um, to our next meeting, which is on November 4th. Commissioner Nash. Thank you, Chair Chavez. Assuming that a commissioner has to make that, that motion, I move that we um, continue uh, the Vineyard Starbucks site renovations planning and zoning permit number 21-550-01 major mod in U-916 uh, special use permit to our next regularly scheduled meeting, which is November 4th, uh, 2021. Thank you, Commissioner Dr. Lopez. 
Second. Thank you. It's been moved and second to continue the item Finyard Starbucks site renovations planning and zoning permit number 21-550-01, major modification to U-916 special use permit to our next scheduled meeting on November 4th, 2021. Is there any discussion on that motion? Vice Chair Rejo. Uh, thank you, Chair Chavez. Um, I'm gonna structure my request um, or question as a point of information so they don't accidentally go into the details of the subject. And I'd like to request, um, uh, assuming that this motion is approved to postpone to our next regularly scheduled meeting, that we are not going to be um, under some time constraint or time limit. Um, I'm just slightly concerned that, um, that if we happen to move it to the November 4th, that a decision doesn't have to be made at that time because of some uh, time limitation that I'm not aware of at this uh, moment in time. Um, I request any member of staff if the chair allows it. My question, thank you. Thank you for that question, Vice Chair. Um, Mr. Pearson, do, is there any time restrictions or deadlines that the applicant needs to meet as far as their site um, that would absolutely require an approval on the November 4th? Chair Chavez and Vice Chair Rio, um, at this time, staff's not aware of any um, timelines that would apply to this project. Um, this is a basically a commercial project, so they're not tied to um, funding applications or other things that we might see for other projects. Um, so there wouldn't be a, a set time constraint for the project um, to be approved at the next meeting. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pearson, and thank you, Chair, for allowing that question and for um, better clarifying my question um, for staff. Um, no further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any additional comments or questions on the motion? Seeing and hearing none. Madam Secretary, we're going to have the roll call. Commissioner Nash? Aye. Commissioner Lopez? Aye. Vice Chair Wejo? Aye. Commissioner Connolly? Yes. Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Chair Chavez? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you for that. Um, this will now bring us to our next item, which is study sessions and reports. Nothing is listed, followed by planning commission business. Commissioners, is there any business to bring before the commission? Commissioner Connolly. Uh, so just real quick, my partner and I are doing a fundraiser tomorrow evening. Uh, it's an invite only fundraiser for the Boys and Girls Club of Oxnard. Um, we do it annually and usually it's a big gala. Obviously COVID has, has changed the way that we do things. So it's going to be a little bit of a smaller event, but our goal is definitely to raise $50,000 for the Boys and Girls Club of Oxnard. I know our applicants many of which have uh, supported the Boys and Girls Club of Oxnard and we have done so for many years in the past. So I just wanted to say that, that we're working on raising money as well. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Connolly. Commissioner Dr. Lopez. Our general comments, is this a, an opportune time for that? This is your opportunity to say whatever Great. your little heart desires. Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, I think uh, just generally, as I was reviewing the, the packet for this week, uh, you know, I started to kind of just, I think, see some of the things that perhaps some of the other commissioners uh, have taken notice of, you know, with the majority of our applicants, you know, kind of like concentrating in that vineyard corridor from like Vineyard and Oxnard Boulevard. Uh, you know, to uh, over the bridge and into the El Rio and, and Hugging River Park. Um, and so I know that that there was no regulation, there was no uh, policy set forth or adopted by, by city council. Uh, but, you know, I think that that's something that uh, over the months, uh, commissioners have kind of taken notice or have been questioned, uh, you know, to see if certain numbers uh, of, of licenses, uh, you know, should be in different uh, parts of the city. Uh, I think that the the one we um, 
uh, just approved uh, last tonight uh, with South, South Oxnard being the first exception. Maybe there was the very first one that was, you know, coming into the city along the 101, but, uh, you know, over here closer to Camarillo. But other than that, I would want to say maybe three, four, maybe five now uh, are along that that vineyard corridor, which, you know, could be just developing as, as Oxnard version of, of the Green Mile. And so uh, just wanted to throw that out there for folks, uh, you know, we don't have any any control or or even um, I think uh, power to do anything about it, but it is something that I think uh, our city leadership should uh, perhaps uh, you know just begin to discuss as as we move uh, you know forward. But other than that, it's an absolute pleasure to to uh, be on this commission with with all of you. I have to say I appreciate. Uh, everyone's uh, time, uh, thoughtfulness, and and even uh, your deliberation uh, thoughts that that you share. Uh, you know, I, I uh, you know just really have enjoyed my time thus far uh, on the commission, and and thank you all uh, as well as our staff uh, for helping us uh, to achieve the work that we're doing. So thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Dr. Lopez, Commissioner Meyer. Thank you, Chair Chavez. Um, I wanted to uh, uh, share with everyone that uh, this year we are celebrating the 20th anniversary of CAUSE, uh, Central Coast Alliance United for a Sustainable Economy, um, which has uh, grown from the Living Wage Coalition that helped bring living wage ordinances uh, at county and certain city levels in our county um, to now being an organization that supports um, the six county Central Coast region in many aspects uh, with a specific view towards Ventura County and Santa Barbara County. Um, I'm fortunate to be serving currently as the president of the board for cause. And I, so I wanted to make this uh, widely known to everyone who happens to be paying attention to all my fellow commissioners. Um, and we are celebrating um, with our annual fundraiser, uh, the Raising Justice fundraiser on Thursday, November 4th. Um, it will be a virtual event. Um, and also a, a key community building event. So uh, any of you have been to any of the community building luncheons and raising justice events of the past more than 15 years, um, uh, you'll know what uh, those events bring. Um, and uh, I hope that those of you who have been involved or would be interested in involved would reach out and we'd love to have your involvement and support. Um, in an organization that's done some really amazing things uh, in terms of social, environmental, economic justice for the city of Oxnard and beyond. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Meyer. Any additional um, business from the commission? Seeing and hearing none, we'll go ahead and proceed to our next item, community development staff updates. Mr. Kowitz. Maybe. And Chair Chavez, I, I, I think that we, uh, we're looking for community development director. Okay, thank you. Um, it, it got fainter and fainter as, as we all spoke. So I'll, I'll go quick here. Um, just want to remind you that all that as of tonight, you have now reviewed and approved eight different cannabis uh, retailer special use permit applications. Uh, a total of 16 applicants were able to enter into the ring. Um, so technically you're halfway uh, through that whole process. Uh, per the city's regulations, uh, the applicants have until March 1st, 2022 to secure their permits. Um, so uh, we have another six applicants that are actively uh, making it through the process uh, right now that we anticipate uh, will be able to get before you before if we hit that March 1st clock. So just wanted to uh, share that with you at this point. Um, a couple other quick follow-up items. Uh, this uh, past Tuesday on the 19th, the City Council uh, did conduct the second reading of all of the housing element related, related ordinance amendments, as well as the firearm buffer uh, ordinance amendment. Uh, all of those passed um, at the second reading, which means they go into effect in 30 days. So as of uh, November 18th, all those rules and regulations that you worked on go into effect. So uh, thank you for your efforts um, to get us to that point. Um, 
looking out into the future a little bit more. Uh, 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 November 17th, again, is just a reminder that that's the day that uh, the WAFCO, our local agency formation commission, will be reviewing the Rio Urbana annexation request. And um, two final comments. Thank you for working with us through these technical difficulties tonight. We look forward to seeing you in an operational room uh, on November 4th. Um, and between now and then, um, Halloween will happen. So while this might be an unusual Halloween again, um, we're hoping that it's a safe and enjoyable one for everyone out there. So enjoy your holiday as much as possible um, as we try to get our way back to normalcy at every level. So thank you all for what you do to, uh, for us. We very much appreciate your efforts. Thank you, Mr. Kowitz. Is there any questions for Mr. Kowitz? Mr. Kowitz, I just have one. Um, I know every 30 days we're supposed to renew that AB 361 um, resolution. Um, will our November 4th meeting have that or will it be at our following November meeting? And hopefully you could hear me that. I heard maybe a third of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, AB 361, is it going to come before us again at our November 4th meeting or later? So AB 361, I think was the question uh, in terms of the renewal that's coming back before you on November 4th. Is that a yes or? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. I thought you were just repeating my question. All right. Um, cool. Is there any additional questions from Mr. Kowitz as we um, try to do mime dancing for him? <laughs> uh, Commissioner Nash. Thank you, Chair Chavez. Um, I wasn't able to stay awake for the entire city council meeting last Tuesday but they did approve a rent control ordinance, I believe. And I don't know how, I don't know if uh, Mr. Colwitz would, would care to give a presentation to the, to the uh, planning commission on how that might impact some of our, um, some of our decision-making. I, I, I'll just say that I'll follow up with Mr. Colwitz at a later date. Um, just because of the technical difficulties that we're having right now. But I will follow up with him, Commissioner Nash. Thank you, thank you, Chair Chavez. Okay. Um, since there's no further business before the commission, and if there's no objection to adjourning, we will be adjourning to our November 4th meeting, 2021 at 6 p.m. As always, everyone remain safe around this Halloween and have a great night. Thank you. Y'all take care. Good evening, everyone. Thanks, everyone.